Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push up lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on to bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in hair, extra fruité, the brain. You can't move me. The music is mad. It's a con job, but this grand. I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stink. Yeah, it took some hard work. Blind love play a huge role. And they say that I don't. But they're feeding you fools gold. But I know one thing the truth's home. Even if it's a tough thing to swallow, an even harder thing to hold, and truly know with not a doubt while on the globe. And even though that seems inherent, it ain't always so apparent. Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it. But don't worry, it's a pretty February. In a year with more to carry, and more days is yet to call. Under the sun, taking the ferry to the city, where the moment's extra pretty. Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain that isn't people to the real world. All that stress ain't saving me, fiddle. I swear to God, I'm trying. But they pushing the demons down my esophagus. Screaming the easy life, what I want always. Praise made up holidays. Tell me that love is the answer just to boost this economy. I'm more so now, but I ain't following. I ain't a hollow man. I'm full of them fall winds. Take it all with a tall grin. And if you feel it, do it with me. And just sing with the song, say it all for what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. It ain't all so big. So big, so big, so big. Take it all for what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is, what it is. It ain't all so big. Hello, hello, hello. This is Unsolicited, and I am Security Boss. Hello, everybody. Everyone, excuse me. It is Monday night, and guess what? <laughs> We're here with a show tonight. I hope everybody's having a terrific day. It is a gorgeous day in my state. I hope you all are experiencing the same thing. It's springtime. It was spring as of yesterday. I don't know if you all knew that, but yesterday became spring. I hope, oh, God, my collar is all jacked up, looks like Get myself straight, y'all. Forgive me for that. All right. So listen, I'm going to say hello to everyone that's in the live. Thank you. When you come in the live, please give me the thumbs up. If you're in the chat, make sure you uh, also give me a thumbs up. Stephen Day, how are you? Mr. Baptiste, how are you? I hadn't seen you in a while. I hope you are doing well. You still on that exercise program? I know you are. Good. It's good to see you guys. Listen, um, tonight. You know, tonight is the, uh, I have a co-host, Black Man Unfiltered. He will be here in just one second, and we're going to pull him up, and we're going to have a good time. XDMC, hello, how are you? You know what? I am glad to see you here, and I was actually able to see you the other day for the first time. I'm glad to have met you, <laughs> unofficially, but I'm glad. <laughs> Black Man, how are you, sir? I am good. How are you? I heard you say you're having a beautiful day in your state. Well, over here in Texas, it's storming, tornado warnings, electricity has oh, been flickering a little bit. Um, yeah, it's crazy got, on this side. Got like 75 degrees. Oh, it's beautiful. No. It's beautiful. And you know, I'm still having trouble getting getting acclimated to this light. It's still light outside here, and it's like been like for the you know, it's going to not get dark until about eight o'clock probably. So, right. What's up, Jenny? <laughs> Jenny, how are you? Thank you. Welcome to SB Nation. I like that y'all are getting really used to that. I am too. Tommy mm -hmm. B, how are you? <laughs> Good vibes, Tommy. That's all Tom we got. That's all SB Nation is about. You know that. So, black man, yes, we gonna have, we gotta do some catching up. I got seen a video you sent me just a little bit ago. Oh uh, yes, I wish we could whole, play it. I think we might be able to, but we, you know how that goes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, might, yeah. Probably not. But listen, um, we had a it was a, a very eventful weekend. You we was everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> I doing everything. Yeah. So yeah, we got some things we could catch up on. And I got something to tell you, but you know, we can't talk about that 
over the over the airs completely. Oh, All right. Okay. Got to talk behind the scenes for behind some of them. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I'm just kidding. But anyway, we're going to get you all up to date on what's going on. So what is going on with you? Everything's good. Um, you know, I, I you know, I got to bring you some type of news that's controversial today. Um, oh, did you see the um, the situation with Penn State College? No. They allowed a young man to come to their college on a full scholarship. And he identifies as a female. And they allowed him to become uh, to get a full scholarship to swim. So this young man put on a wig, put on the, the female suit, went out and swam against uh, the other girls and beat them by a mile. And they championed him yesterday and said the first the first um, yeah, female swimmer to swim that speed uh, with that kind of strength and that and and you know, I just, I, I couldn't, I, I, and, what, are the, saying, what are the parents saying? I know they're going crazy. Or maybe oh, they are, they have, they, the parents have gone nuts. So is he considering himself a transgender? Yes. Or, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's taking all the necessary. No, I know mm -hmm. after the way that he was swimming. Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. That was a man swimming yesterday. Oh, okay. I, so there's, there's no hormonal changes and nothing. He's not even oh. no, the way he was swimming, the way he beat them girls. They were going to the turnaround. He was already back. Oh, gosh. I mean, oh, gosh. <laughs> it was no competition at all. Was nowhere. It didn't come nowhere near. Absolutely not. That's terrible. Well, you know what? That's the, oh, I don't you know if he wants to be transgender. I, you know, I have no complaints about that. That's him. Mm -hmm. But you can't compete in those sports without. So he wants to be, he wants to look somewhat like a woman, but he really don't want to be a woman. Or he right. can't be. He can't yeah. be. Right. They want to compete against girls. And I mean, he whooping them. Ooh, it's that. It's got to be something in their bylaws that says, I bet it's not, though, because this, this is not even something you even think about. <laughs> right. Think about that. 20 years ago, you would have never thought of this. Uh -uh. uh uh. No, go. No, but it probably went back a little further. But no, we wouldn't. Mm mm. So they're going to have to rewrite some things. I agree. I agree. So tell me something. Um, I saw you on a couple of platforms. You, what you've been listening to? Did you? Did you? I'm not going to put anything in your head. Go ahead. What, what you've been listening to? I want to get you. I've been hearing a lot about the manosphere is closed for business. Yes. What is um, that about? Do you have any idea? See, I never knew what the manosphere was before. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm not going to. I don't know what it is closed. So. Um, well, the manosphere is uh, it started with white men, right? Believe, believe it or not, um, and then the black men came in and they started it. Uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson was one of the one of the original founders of it. Um, this is way before Kevin. Uh, Tommy Sotomayor was one of them, uh, one of the champions of that. And it was men that basically said, "Listen, we're gonna stand for men's rights. We're not gonna let men get played. We're gonna let men know their value." We're going to let them know they don't have to put up with these females. Uh, we, they don't have to, you know, they, it was basically a, a, a place where men can come and be men. Right. Uh, without being judged or being, you know, this. And sometimes these men were very harsh, but they were expressive. And that's one of the things that you never got from men, being expressive. So, right. But then what happened was you let a couple of simps in. That's what happened. You let a couple of simps in and they took it to another level that just basically is destroying the foundation of it. Right. Because you got now you got some men in the manosphere that are saying the opposite of what the, the manosphere actually is. Um, so I watched the TL, TLA show the other day. Mm -hmm. oh, and did you watch it? You know, I was trying to watch it and I was like, what's going on? Because, I, you know, when you come in in the middle of something, you never get it right. You, right. Just to, you know, and I did not go back. I did not go back. But I did hear him say is the manosphere done and he was like or is it you know he was like is it good or is it just effery and i'm like right. what that's a lot yeah because you got grown me right now you let, like i said you let these little boys in and these little boys then came in starting beef amongst the men right so the man spirit everybody was on one page then you let these little immature boys in here mm -hmm. and now these little immature boys that's what early, late 20s early 30s then got in here and now they're starting beef with the, uh, the the original founders. They're starting beef with each other. They're, they're, the men are fighting and cussing each other out and 
talking about let's meet up somewhere. You know, when they have the meetups, we're going to meet up, we're going to fight. And I mean, you got men that are crossing the line because the original man is fear. Wives were off limits. Children were off limits, right? If, if a man had something to settle with another man, they were settling it amongst themselves. Now you got men in the manosphere looking up people's wives, putting their pictures up, talking about their putting their, their wives pictures up and, and just dragging the wives, talking about their hair, talking about their wives, talking about their children. You know, putting pictures of people's children up. You got men uh, getting on platforms. Uh, you know, uh, talking about. I mean, I heard one other day. I'm not gonna say no names, but I heard one other day on the platform say uh, your son uh, talking about one of the. We all know him, but you know, talking about one of our other YouTube creators. A uh, son recently passed away, and he was saying, "I don't give a damn about your son dead." I, matter of fact, I'm glad he did. With the kind of daddy that you are, with the kind of daddy you are, I'd rather be dead too. Right? Oh. So you, so they they're crossing the line. These little boys then came in and crossed the line. What needs to happen it needs to be an extermination of those little boys, and and, and get back to and get things back to business. Um, that's what mm. I believe. Um, and the business is just supposed to be to empower men. Exactly. And, and to have a place where they can come and speak on their issues and, and settle them amongst men. Amongst men. Exactly. That was the initial plan. Now, is that the same? Is that the same for the um, Caucasian or the white uh, manosphere also? Is that the same? Yeah, because I don't know if you've heard of the white Kevin Samuels. No, but I do. I did know that there was a white manosphere. I heard that and just in picking up on, you know. Yeah, Hold on, man. Impressive. Hello. How are you? Yeah, it is terrible. It's yeah, terrible. There, there's a white guy out there right now. And he's talking to the white women like Kevin Sanders talking to the black women. And I mean, and I mean, I, I mean, him and Kevin, they, woo, they can go tit for tat. Because, man, this white dude, I mean, he a bald head dude with glasses, got a big gray beard. Um, what, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, though. Are you saying that, that white women actually have some of the same issues that the black women have? Well, no, what, what he's saying, well, he's talking about, see, he's talking about it from a cultural standpoint of, like, most of the time he's even talking about what, uh, white women that are um, trying to be with black men. So he's looking at it like, why y'all leaving the white men for black men, Hispanic oh. men, you know, that type of, you know, okay. he's on there calling them trash, you trash. Why would you want to go to another culture? Why don't you stay in your own culture and all this? So, yeah, they're basically, that's what he's on. Basically, his name apparently is Richard Coop, uh, Cooper and anti. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Richard Cooper. Yes. Hello. Exactly. exactly. Hello. Thank you for that information. Eugene Steele. Hey, how are you? So, you know what? I hate that that happened because I don't really know. Um, I mean, I don't know when people are a part of the manosphere. I don't not too many people announce it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's because it's good or bad. So you just kind of learn what you learn just by listening here and there. Mm -hmm. This is him. If, if you can see him up close. There you go. Oh, look at him. Hot tamale. Yeah, I see him. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, XDMC says uh, the Manosphere has turned into the Maury show. Yep, it's exactly. Important. It is. This was a barbershop for some brothers. Now it's just insane. Brothers used just to come. Brothers use, used to come for therapy. I don't know what to call it now. Wow. Well, see, oh, XDMC. But watch this, though. Just because you lost the Manosphere Barbershop don't mean there's not another one. That's right. You, you got your barbershop every Friday night. Every Friday night. Every wow. Friday night. You come over to Black Men Unfiltered Network on Fridays. You know what? Security boss, I meant to tell you. I think I'm four away from 700 today. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. All right. There you go. We got to continue. We got to continue to to blast you out so you can get what you need to get so you can get monetized. And monetized. You it gets exciting at that point. It's exciting now doing the work, but it's hard. Oh, yeah, I, know yeah, it is. Yeah. I know it is. I know. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I know. I but know. listen, <laughs> um, that brings me to my second story. And I, I need to hear your true opinion about this because okay. I was watching also. I be coming in and out because, you know, on the weekend, I like to do my thing. So mm -hmm. I was also watching uh, Sage Talk with Mr. Lee. Did you catch any of that? I did not. What did I miss? Mm, it's scandalous. No, it's not really scandalous. <laughs> you know, he's talking about putting that group together. Um, and he actually gave it a name. It's Black Alpha Group. Mm. And in the Black Alpha Group, um, 
you know, it's empowering men, showing them how, you know, have to be valuable. It's giving them the image. Um, it's growing them up as men, giving them value informa valuable information. It's working on their mental, their physical. It actually sounds like a very, very good program, but it was one thing I didn't agree with him on. All right. And me, Moses, what is he saying? Oh, he said he wants to join. Who's starting it? Uh, the barbershop. <laughs> or what? Wait a minute. I'm not sure what you're speaking of. Which part? <laughs> yeah, what you talking about, Neil? <laughs> but uh, he. it seems like it's called the Black Alpha, the Black Alpha Group. And it sounds like it's going to be very good. He's um, talking about, you know, starting with the image, you know, imparting some discipline. You know, he wants the young men, uh, men, period, to have discipline when they show up. I agree. I, I agree with everything he's saying. He's actually showing them how to get jobs. Um you know, but the only thing I don't agree with him on, and I would have to just listen closer to make sure, I, you know, that I'm not hearing what I'm, you know, I want to hear it correctly. Hey, OG Patrice, I want to hear OG. it. I want to hear it, you know, in its entirety. But he made mention of one show on their network, which was um, a mirror show. And he said, I go, there's one show on this network that a woman has. And all I see is men, you know, on the panel or listening in and you all shouldn't be listening to women. Mm. You know, yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, I knew he was talking about a mirror and I'm thinking, Hmm. So then he goes on to say, you know, but I'm not going to take it out of context. So I have to go back and listen and make sure, but I I'm almost sure I heard him say that. So, um, now I don't know a mirror to, to, uh, I don't know a mirror to speak of, um, trying to make men whole. I don't know her to speak that. Right. So I'm not sure, but he said there's at this particular network, there's one woman and all I see is men. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what He's he said. Shade. Yeah. Because I watch a mirror. Um, yeah. I used to watch a heavy until I got heavy in my own. Right. So a lot right. of things I can't watch like I used to, cause I'm putting in the work. Um, but uh, a mirror is, she's a champion for men too. I, um, I I know. So that was what I was. That, that That's what got me uh, to thinking. And I'm like, wait a minute now. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. you, well, he said, then he said, he went on to say, you can listen, but you shouldn't be on her panel. You can be in the back, you know, but you, you know, he said he looked, he saw it one time and the panel was full of men, but you can listen, you know, maybe you got something to say, go up and get out, but you shouldn't be on her panel. Well, what he's not understanding is because I, I disagree with him. I don't think that uh, you can be in this. I think that you need allies. And when you and when you're in a position um, where you're trying to champion men and trying to get men to understand their value, like we talked about on Sir Hill Speaks, Sir Hill Speaks, guys, go go subscribe. Go but subscribe. Listen, go subscribe. Um, but when you have men champion, you got to have allies. It's just like racism. In order for racism to stop, in order for racism to have some type of breaks to it. You got to have some superior white folks. You got to have Bill Gates down there marching with these people. You got to have Joe Bezos building compounds for for people to, for racism. You got to have the other side. You got to have allies. And so in this, the women are our allies, like yourself, security boss. Well, listen, hold on. We we're not gonna blame him for something he didn't do. I think he wants to have these allies, as far as the women go. Excuse me, but I think he wants to impress first. Hmm get you to a point where you can hear these allies correctly okay. um, because you know a chameleon could hurt you right so i think that's what he that's the point that i think he was making that a chameleon you know somebody that's given a wrong or incorrect message or a woman that's given an incorrect message could be you know very detrimental to a young man exactly um, okay well, of course i got to thinking about myself and i'm like wait a minute all I, you know men always listen but i'm not trying to grow men up but I would like for them to all get married. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, listen, he's, uh, listen, and anti-social socialite, uh, says black women shouldn't run a man's space. I agree. Now, where exactly is the man's space and what does that mean? But I agree with you. I do agree. A black woman should not run a man's space. Yeah, so we, basically, go ahead. Black man. Yeah. Because the guy on TLA the other day, if you were, if you remember, one guy came on and said he think that's the that's the biggest problem that the, that they've allowed women into the into the manosphere. Okay, um, so there are women in the manosphere. Absolutely, and he said that one of the biggest problems is uh, they've let immature little boys in and they've let women in. He said, okay, wait, a minute, "Wait a minute, what do the women actually do in the manosphere?" 
the women actually um they 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 actually come in like a mirror they're all like a mirror or oh, like you mean uh, just speak on on speak advocate for men yeah yeah okay. they're like they're, okay. they're, they're like a, they're like a mirror they're like um what's the other lady name with the 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 the, the hair wrap oh i can't forget it i keep forgetting her name um, oh, you're talking about uh yeah uh yeah i can't uh, what is her I, name what are you talking about i know who you're talking about her name is uh Crimson. Oh, crimson. crimson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> she's so, thank you so much. We're glad you're here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Crimson Cure. Yeah. She's so they're more they're like her. Like, and she's basically advocating for men and telling women, hey, listen, you're behaving in this manner, but you should behave in this manner if you want to keep these type of men. Okay. And so that that brought some division inside of the manosphere. Yeah, because a lot of men say, This is our space. Why are we starting to let women in? Right. And Mr. Logic is here. And this is what I was saying. Mr. Logic, how are you? He says the goal was to deal with men first. And um, I think I heard that uh, you have to get the men to a place where they can hear mm -hmm. um, a woman. Yeah. But I didn't know they actually let women in the manosphere, though. I didn't know that. Yeah, they were in there. And uh, Mr. Logic, what's going on, man? Hey, I hope you got that information. Uh, if you didn't, blackmanunfiltered at gmail.com, man. Because the other night, I didn't know if you got it or not, because you got out pretty quick. And you asked me for it. So there you go. Yeah, you know what, Mr. Steele, I actually did see you there. So I, I was got listen, like I told Logic the other day, it was kind of sad to me to see such um the young men, they looked a little sad, uh, a little despair. But like I told Logic the other day, um, keep doing what you're doing. You know, I agree with it a hundred percent because young men do need to be empowered and anything that you can do to help a young man, I agree with. But I don't I don't know how I feel about the don't talk to young talk to women. So I'm a little right. out to lunch on that. So y'all, you got to help me out with that logic. I'll listen to you. You know I will. So um, but that yeah, that was interesting. But I was glad to see. So I guess the timing of that is absolutely very, very good because if the manosphere is falling apart, the young mm -hmm. men really do need somewhere to go. Yep. And um help them understand themselves and, and grow. So that's right. actually actually very very good that's very good actually i didn't know all that was happening you know like that at the same time so that's and then good. and then another thing we have and, 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 you know this ain't gonna be sexy and i know a lot of people may take this as shade now you want me to call names i can but i, I just don't want to do it today but uh it's a lot of men out here as well where we talked about friday um on uh barbershop talk there's a lot of men that don't know how to pass the torch or there's a lot of men uh older men that don't want to share space and so they're stuck in their ways and so what i'm saying to you is they want things to be one way and the other younger men like myself like sir hill speaks uh, mm -hmm. like um we we run our platforms a different type of way and we have older gentlemen that will that will uh uh try to push away from us and not talk to us no more you know people that used to support us you know we don't know hear from them no more uh and, and the reason is and you hear a lot of them speaking on us around the whole i mean the whole youtube streets here that um there shouldn't be any panels right there should be any panels um there shouldn't be any men uh having arguments and fussing but but what they should be doing is sitting down and having intellectual conversations. That's it. And my response to that is, how can you? Uh, how can anything get pushed up or, or or succeed without discord? You tell me one thing that has been passed in Congress, Senate, passed in state bills, legislation. Tell me one thing that, uh, or even buying stock. Tell me one thing that you can go and and be competitive with without having discord. So you're saying discord can't happen intellectually? We can't have a difference in opinion and speak on it intellectually? Is that what yes. you're saying? Yeah, we can. But sometimes as men, because say for instance, you have four, you have four alpha men on a, on a platform. Sometimes those men are going to bump heads. Yeah, and that's okay because that's what men do. I mean, right. but but you still have to establish a level of respect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for men. You know, that's, I mean, I'm telling women every day, that we have to value men, but right. it's up to the men to value themselves and each other, each other. almost. Exactly. Um, you know, that takes me to an incident that I had. I think it was last night. Yeah. Last night over on Anton Daniels um, live last night. Hello, Bethany. How are you? You, I don't know if you saw it. Like, with Jay Prince, with, with yes, this, yes. Let, me tell you what, let me tell you what happened. 
Okay. So I was sitting, I was still, I was on talking on another platform after, I was still doing the after show with Sir Hell Speaks. Uh, and so we were behind. No, no, after it was over, and we oh, ended okay. it, we stayed oh. back and talked about ideas, you know, just stuff like you. that, right? I got you. Okay. And so I was looking, so I was talking to them, but I on my other screen over here, I had you guys. I was scared about over there answer. And then I saw Jay doing this. I said, I said, I stopped everything. I said, hold on, everybody. And so I clicked on, I said, oh no, his volume too high. And so I, I text Mr. Boss. I said, oh, uh, his volume too high. I'm trying to get on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, I'm trying to get on. Wait, wait a minute. And so Aaron, Aaron was like, uh, um, I don't think Aaron saw me, or I don't know if they tried to get somebody else up there because he knew if I came on, it would have been World War Three. But I think he was very disrespectful to you last night. And I can't wait to get on the Antonio panel this weekend. I'm gonna check him straight up. I'm but listen though, him. let me let me say this. I'm not gonna he was disrespectful in his tone, but I, I didn't take that towards me. I hate I mean, I'm not, you know, Jay Prince gets out of control. But I'm I'm a, I'm gonna give him I just think Jay Prince was showing out. Does that make sense? I okay, just think okay. he was showing out. <laughs> you know how we'll give, we'll give him some grace. Yeah, you know how when you're young and you just mm -hmm. want to show out. I think that's where he was because um he just wasn't making any sense. He wasn't right. reasonable. And I just, you know and that's what I'm saying. What are you advocating <laughs> for? Like and, 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 and my thing is this if you if you think back, me and Jay Prince, I'm telling you, I don't want to take credit for anything that he's got going on right now, him being known. But when Jay Prince first came to answer the show, me and him had it out. I don't know if you don't know if you remember that. And so I was like, dude, what what is the real problem? Like what is and so he started breaking down. He said, Man, if you would have came to me like this at first, you wouldn't have had no problems in the beginning. And so we were still in the live, and he was telling me about how his mom died in his arms and, yeah, and how he yeah. dealt with all that and whatever. And so we broke that thing down. I said, so all this anger and animosity you have is because you lost your mama, not because you got you want to go hit everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and last night he was um listen, Mr. Logic said that's exactly why we need to work on men first and cute about listen. I'm not disagreeing with you, Logic. I agree all day long. But also note that everybody will not be able to cross over that threshold. You all going to have to close the door on some of them. Yep. You have to just close the door until they grow up. But um, what I wanted to say, though, uh, I didn't take it like that because he was what I wanted him to get away from me just listening to him was the fact that he was talking about another black man. And I just wanted him to give that other black man the respect mm -hmm. of being in his child's mother's life exactly indeed that's what it was you know i'm like right. don't you are you not listening to your because he was going off on this man but at first he said he's a good guy hello before the billions before the billions what's going on my guy oh and congratulations to him for hitting his thousand oh congratulations uh, before the billions. so listen yeah. at, at first he said he said that um the man well, at first he called him the stepdad or and he, you know, he may, I thought maybe, you know, when people say stuff like that, I thought there's a marriage situation involved. So when he said he's a good guy, I'm thinking, oh, okay, good. Well, then he's helped taking care of your child and he lost his mind when I said that. <laughs> well, I just felt like he was kind of just showing out a little bit, but I, just, I think Jay Prince might just need that kind of attention for some reason. Yeah. So, you know, it, did, it didn't bother me because I didn't feel like he called me out my name or did anything like that. I felt like he was just being Jay Prince. Right. And, you know, so I've seen and I've heard people, uh, I've seen that type of behavior before uh, of grownups. And sometimes they just do it to sometimes to make you scared of them. Sometimes mm -hmm. just to get attention, sometimes mm -hmm. just to, uh, you know, be bully. You know, you know, you right. can show out in an environment and you make people do what you want them to do. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I saw of it. So he's he's fine. He just, you know, I just question it. I question a lot about what Jay Prince is up to. But I definitely um, agree with logic that they are and still do need to hold um Jay Prince to some all men to, to a definite definite standard. I just don't want him to not be able to be a part of it because he can't even get his stuff together coming in the door. You know, so but what you got you gotta set a standard. So and I and I know this is not popular. I, I this is not gonna be popular what I'm about to say. See. Okay. But but my thing is this it ain't all of guys listen in your twenties, early twenties, uh your mid twenties, late twenties, okay. You can you you some men have coochie festivals. <laughs> That's right. But but I mean when you get up in your thirties, you it's just it's just not that important to you no more. I mean, you know, if it happens, okay, but it's not going you're not gonna be 30, almost 40 out here talking about you know, I'm still beating them up, still blowing them, still knocking them down. Just listen, man, get to a point where you be like, okay, 
I mean, I've done enough. Uh, you know, I listen, um, XDM. See, you're right. Listen, we're going to get to the show because I want to say one more thing. He's right. Let me read his comment. It says, it's funny. I'm still meditating on your question. How does wholeness look in your life? You got me thinking, sis. Listen, it got me too. And we're going to get there. That's going to be the mm -hmm. next thing we talk about. But I definitely want to say this, um, black man, to your last comment that you made, just because the, your age increases, it doesn't mean that you grow mentally. Right. Um. I can't think of the word right now, but what it is is sometimes your growth is very stunted if something traumatic happened into your in your life at a certain point of time. Right. And sometimes you never, well, I ain't gonna say never. Sometimes you don't recover at the rate that you need to to deal with that. And your number of age, you know, the wisdom is not there until you deal with whatever it is that stunted your growth. Exactly. And like Gene still says, maturity. It maturity is not always there just because you're getting older. And you're exactly right, Samantha Michelle. How are you? Hey, Samantha. What's going on, girl? Samantha says everyone grows at a different rate. Um, a few men are in their thirties still talking about getting women. You know it, like it's the best thing ever happened. Like they never even had one. You're right. So listen, I'm like XDMC now. Let's get to it. I mm -hmm. hope you thought about it because I want to hear what you have to say, black man. I'm gonna tell you what I have to say about this wholeness because I noticed, y'all, it has now become a talking point. Kinda. Everyone is everyone's saying um, before you get into a relationship, you got to be whole. You got to be whole before you get married. You need to be whole before you do everything. You need to be whole. Uh, I want to know, is is that even real? Is that even obtainable or what does it look like? What uh, is it? Uh, well, I think that um, wholeness is hmm. if you look at wholeness, um, wholeness is unity okay and if you and with that when there's unity there's strength so in some cases why should why some cases i may not be whole because the reflection of that wholeness may not come until i find the rest of what god has for me absolutely so if god has something for me and i'm not whole and there's a piece or or something missing in my life because then, the, then we go into Bible. I don't want to go to Bible study, but I'm, let me stay here for a little bit. Um, he, the Bible says, when you find a wife, you find a good thing, right? And that good thing adds favor to your life, right? And so, when you have a marriage, and the pastor standing there, he says, "I'm bringing you guys together in holy matrimony. Matrimony meaning unity, together as one. So now you now they say you become one." One means you're one together, wholeness. Mm, okay. Right? So my thing is, um, when it comes to that, I, I don't think a person walks around and says, I'm whole, I'm whole. Because especially if you're a person that wants to get married and wants to be in a relationship, you can build all the wholeness you want. But then you also, then now you're going to also connect with someone else. So if, if all your wholeness is already there and you're stuck in your wholeness, what about the person that, that you're marrying? How can you become whole with someone when your wholeness is your own standard and not the standard for your relationship? Mm, oh, that's good. That's in with, within a relationship. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you something. Okay. Um, this all goes back to your belief system, y'all. So wholeness is going to be different for everybody. But you know how we always say, you know, he was broken. He wasn't whole. We, we say this all the time. So for me, my principles are godly principles, right? Exactly. So, if God and truly made us in his image, we were made to be whole, holy, mm -hmm. holy. That's right. who we are. We're, right. we're, we're thriving for that perfection, you know, because mm -hmm. he made us that way. And that's who he is. Exactly. Well, something happened along the way called mm -hmm. sin. Yeah. <laughs> and sin brought along brokenness, right? Yeah. The brokenness is what we have to deal with. But we first have to agree and then uh, accept the fact that there is sin, you know, mm -hmm. that we're not perfect, that there are things that go on in our life and we do have to grow. Exactly. So our life is, we just talked about this. We just said, you know, you're 30, I don't know how old this young man is, but you're, you're in your thirties and you're acting like you're 18. Mm -hmm. You're broken. Why are you broken? Yeah. You have to recognize and see that, you know what? I'm broken right now for whatever reason I have allowed sin to break me. Exactly. I have allowed sin to break me. Yeah, so now we have to put it back together. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
No, 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 no. And and, and you and, and the thing I want to add to that is because we 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 cooking now, and so the thing is that brokenness that's in that man, that brokenness that's in that woman. Yes. You 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 may meet the pot. You may God may set up the potter, and he may make the woman of that man that situation the clay that brings that thing back together. Right. Yeah, so you he absolutely does. Absolutely. So that man broke. Okay, he broke. He had a good job, lost everything. And then you may be an accountant. You can bring that man back together, right? Right? You can bring you could teach him some things, right? Because he's not lacking in the love area. He's not lacking in the adultery area. He's not lacking in cheating. He's lacking in financial mental stability. So that's why I asked the question, will we ever um how should I say it? Can we, can we, are we, as long as there's sin, can we, can we, we can always expect to grow in our wholeness because you know, they, they always say you got to be whole before you get married. I, I don't know if that's true. That's, that's not true. Because things happen. You may get as a child, you may be, uh, get molested. You may be raped. Um, you may, your, your parents may pass away. Uh, you may have suffered a traumatic childhood. Now, you, exactly dysfunction and trauma and you learn how and you understand that this is a sinful world that we live in and you accept that and you get therapy for it and you work it out but it's still real isn't it yeah and how do you know god exists if you don't go through anything oh wait a minute i'm about to, mm. I'm about to throw something because i just feel like it, how do you know <laughs> how do you know god how do you know he does if he, if he doesn't exist if you how can he help you? How can he get you through something? And that's why you see so many men at their weddings crying, very emotional, because before her, he lacked. With her, he becomes whole. Oh. Thank right. you. We're finishing each other's sentences. Come on. <laughs> Come on here. Hey. I, need to <laughs> I need to get a money line. Money line. Yeah, Let's go, you know, man. So, you know, so I, I've been thinking about this whole, and I want to hear, guys, listen, this is just me thinking about this, and this is me, black, um, uh, bouncing off of what black man is saying. We did not talk about this before. It was just mm -hmm. my thoughts. And I'm just saying, whole. Oh, that's, yep. you know, it was it was perfect at one time, but it's no more. Yep. So seeing that it's not perfect anymore, will we ever not be or have to experience some amount of dysfunction and trauma that we have to grow from? Mm -hmm. So when does, we, when when do we achieve this whole this this wholeness then? When does this wholeness come to us? But, but watch this wholeness is also realizing that there's always room for peace, room for forgiveness. See, you're not actually whole if you out here and your husband has done something against you in your marriage and you know you guys can heal from it, but you build up a wall to keep your husband out. And you say, no, I'm not going to trust you again. No, I, I can't believe you did that to me. I, I, I always go to this. What if we went to Times Square in New York? And God put up all the mistakes you made that he forgave you for up on the big screen. Mm. Would you still feel the same way? And, and mm. so we, so being whole is also being honest. Being whole is being transparent. One being more. whole is being forgiving. And one right? more, being whole is being accountable. Acca oh, the cuss word. Everybody hate these days. So listen, T. Shaw says there is a danger in unhealed pain, though. It is. It is. We're, not saying that. We're saying it has to be recognized. But yep. the question is, is what is it to you? Excuse me. And will you how can you achieve this? Because a lot of times people say you need to be whole before marriage. Mm. Sometimes marriage brings out your brokenness. Yep. Because you, 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 you think you're keeping it a secret. And I have even heard men. And women say, I'm taking this to my grave. I, who was that? The other night. Um, who was it? Ghost in the machine said, uh-uh, men, men, some, we ain't saying nothing. We're taking this to, our, to grave. our grave. I said, what? I said, you can't, you know. So that's broken, unhealed. So there was never any wholeness. Mm -hmm. So there was never any recognition of the dysfunction that's in this world or who you are. Exactly. You know, all these things, all these things shape us, and that's that's who we actually become. Yep. I, I can't help it, y'all. So the dysfunction that we grow up in, it shapes us. Yep. Uh, things that happen to us, it shapes us. We have to actually learn, learn how to accept. And I hate to say it because it may not be the best word, but we have to learn how to accept what has happened to us and understand that it's not our fault. 
and, and, and in fact, right, it's not your fault. And also, because now we have to look on the flip side of it too, the, the, of the manipulating side of it too as well, for people that are not married, but, but, but they've gone through so much and they seek to destroy those who want to be married. Or want. And, and one of the things I would like to share with you guys tonight is if you want to, might want to write this one down because it's about to blow the, the whole face of the mountain off. Gotcha. I think beware of falling into the emotions of unconscious people. Mm. Explain this unconsciousness because, you know, consciousness is deep. I, I, I wasn't prepared to go there today. I don't know if we can, but <laughs> explain this unconsciousness you're talking about. Unconsciousness means a person that has not healed. Okay. Don't fall into their emotions because their emotions have led. Look at like it's it's like okay, take these women out, women or men. Okay, I'll do men because I know normally we do women. Look at the guy that had the twenty six kids. How many? How many? 20? Oh, you're talking about Jay. He had thirty six. Thirty six kids, right? So yes, I, am, I, gave, I, I took ten off. Um, thirty six kids, right? When I say beware of falling into the emotions of unconscious people. Is that in his emotional state, he has in his life, he has some untapped trauma that made him feel like every woman he sleep with, he got to impregnate. Mm, I never thought about like that, but I hear what you're saying. He there is, is uh -huh. he is definitely broken. You are exactly right. right. Exactly. And watch what happened. These women fell into the emotions of an unconscious man. They didn't dig deep in him, they stayed on the surface of him. And that allowed him to manipulate them to get them pregnant, to, to manipulate them time and time again. That's why when you say, man, no women knew that this dude was out here in these streets. He was for the street. Why are they still having sex with this man? Because they're tapping into his unconscious state where this man, his unconsciousness means he's hurt. He has untapped pain that he has not dealt with, that he has not uh, faced. And he takes that pain, turns it into sex, and sex is a relief factor for him. And he uses his sex to relieve, and the women are in that emotion. Now, watch what, what would happen if he met a woman like Security Boss? She would run. I mean, I understand you would run, but I'm saying hypothetically. <laughs> if he ran to a woman with your mindset, the way you think, the way you carry yourself, and you say, no, you're not going to lay with me. No, you're not going to have sex with me. No, 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 no. You have work to do. Oh, I, I, I would I could only talk to him in a, as of someone that has empathy and compassion for him because I would need to know what is moving him. How, I, I, need, I need to know how he even gets up in the morning. Right. I'm thinking, how in the world do you get up in the morning knowing you got 36 kids out here and you get up and go and you don't talk to him. You don't have nothing to do with him and right. you act like nothing is going on. Right. So but I, I don't know if I can hold Jay responsible for all that, because somewhere along the line. Those women were more broken than Jay was because uh -huh. listen, I give I give anyone a oops, but Jay had four kids by one woman. Yep. So yep. again, there was no wholeness. And so so there was something that happened to her also. Oh yeah. That oh, yeah. kept her from knowing that sin is real and she can she's not a victim. And she has to be accountable for it in order for her not to live in it anymore. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. That's, and that's what we don't do that. See that, that accountability, that, that, that whole list that you just gave, that's what makes us whole. Yep. That's what makes us whole. But I, I do still say sometimes we don't get that until someone that loves and cares about this, us that has empathy for us, a husband or a wife points it out to us because we walk around here like we got it together. Yep, and we're suffering in silence. Right. And, yeah. and, and you know what happens? You meet somebody. Let's, let's walk down this path right here because this is what wholeness isn't. You walk, you walk in every day, young women, you're out here, you're looking amazing, you look wonderful, you dress, you know, nice. You, you, you know, a guy approaches you, you say, Here's my number. But my thing is this before you give him your number, sometimes the sometimes when you cook in a skillet. Sometimes you can shine it up pretty good, but sometimes there's still gonna be a little bit, a little bit of burn marks on it, a little, a couple of stains from the breast of the burn that you that, that just don't come off. It's there, right. and sometimes that's what we have going into a relationship. But don't take the the whole pan with stuff that you could have wiped out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. But listen, T. Shaw says, but is it fair to go into a relationship knowing you are bleeding, bitter, anger, mean, depressed, sad, etc.? Uh -huh. The other person has 
has to sometimes have to pay for what someone else did. T. Shaw, let me tell you something. I almost think now you don't y'all don't beat me up this. I almost think this is what marriage is about. Mm. I almost because we're not going to be abusive. But see, all these things that you just said, bleeding anger, bitter, mean, depressed, all that stuff right there can be can be hid from a guy who a woman mm -hmm. that can definitely put on a what do you call it? Put on a, a facade. A facade. That, that ain't what we call it, though. What was? Yeah, a facade is what it is, but it's another mm -hmm. word I'm looking for. But they can that we can act that way through this because we really are a good person. Yeah, we can really we can we can bring the representative to the table with this, and we can we can we can handle those things for a exactly. long while. Because guess what? I don't want to be this. These are just these are just the uh, byproducts of what happened to me throughout my life. And see, I, I don't have to, you know. I can be very kind, but bitter because, you know, once, when you're good on one side, you're just as good on the other side. Right. Your representative. You know what? I love this SB Nation. They help me out so much. Miss Creative. Thank you. You can bring your representative and she can perform for you for months because you really are that person. You are a good person. But exactly. the things that happen to you, they happen. The dysfunction, the uh, trauma, it really happened. I'm not going to say it who is who you is. It was what happened to you. Right. So sometimes you don't. The only time anyone will even know this is when you get into that relationship, marriage relationship with a husband. And those things that start to uh, the love starts to peel the layers off. Mm. Then he, he starts to see exactly who you are and who he's dealing with. And then here, here comes the bitterness or here comes that uh that which that sexless marriage because uh something happened that y'all ain't never talked about now here it comes yep. but see this is see that's why your vows say what they say right yep. so this is the process of becoming whole when you're able to pull off the layers and be able and you're able to see exactly who you are mm -hmm. exactly who you are without you know without seeing them through the lens of uh of the shame because you know back in the day we didn't tell nothing everything was shameful you 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 um uh, you basically uh what you put the dysfunction in the closet and you bet not tell nobody about it if your granddad mm -hmm. touch you or your uncle touch you you better not yep. tell nobody about what go, on, what go on in this house stay, stay in, in this house. house so nobody knew so for years you created all kind of stories around what happened you know, one time he touched you, the next time he slept with you, all of that for you to try to deal with it or whatever, to try to cope with it. Do you know how deep that would be by this time of marriage? So guess what? You and your husband get together and he start peeling off the layers just in love because that's what does it. He's showing you that I'm going to love you no matter what. So now, believe it or not, you're becoming whole within this relationship. You know, now what it takes is a very strong man to have empathy and compassion for who you are and be able to see who you are and mm. not your dysfunction. And right. if we can see past that dysfunction. You got yourself a good woman, and, but and, you have to work through it. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, again, you know, I know a lot of people are not believers, but scripture is very important because sometimes it can define the, the, the moment. And so Mark seven is 15 says, it's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. So my thing is this, we can, we can have people that have this surface problem, this surface attitude, this surface mindset, but, but or if we're truly looking at the heart, they're not defiled. They're not, they're not looked upon as being horrible people, but the only time we look at it is hard if it's coming from the heart. But a lot of people put on this facade and they act a certain way, and, and mostly, let me tell you what, let me tell you something. My sister is the most, I talk about her a lot. I love her to death, but she's just crazy as hell. But my <laughs> sister is one of those women. Um, my sister is very loving, has a good heart, will give you the clothes off her back. But she carries on this facade because some people, some people become so comfortable in their trauma because it gives them the attention that they need. Listen, I'm pretty sure. Did did we say didn't we start the show with that though? Didn't I tell you about somebody showing out? Yep. 
That's so that that wasn't something we started in our 30s. We've been doing that, getting attention for a long time. That wasn't mm -hmm. a new act. Just think about it. Just think about it. I, it. As long as I'm in my trauma, as long as I'm talking about my life and all the crazy stuff I've done, people like that. They're attached to that. So I'm going to keep showing them this. But on the inside, you crying like a baby because you're not healed from it. Why do you think that people or women sometimes and single mothers, I love you. You got to do what you got to do. But wh why do you think somebody where some women wear it as a badge of honor? Because because um, I oh, here we go. There you go, there you go right uh, because, there. Uh -huh, because because women, other women champion it. Other women encourage it. Other women um, say, girl, there you go. Get that nigga. Cut him up. Put his ties. Yeah, you did what? Ah, girl, that's what I'm talking about. But let's just keep it real. No woman wants to be a single mother. Right. right. You're right. So you see, here we go again. That's a trauma that I'm having to cover up to deal with. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be in this position. I honestly don't. It didn't work out for me. I got to do what I got to do, and I got to be the best single mom I can be. Exactly. But I really don't. My heart hurts because I don't want to be here. Right. But I'm here. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that into a relationship because first of all, I'm not letting anybody know that it's bothering me mm -hmm. to be here because, you know, it's, you know, if you have a person, if you're a person that has value or, or you, you feel a certain way by yourself and you, you've accomplished some things in life, because that's what actually gives you value. Right. Um, you don't want to blemish your reputation. You know, you don't. And what the way people think about you or see you is very important to you. Right. So if you blemish your reputation, you're going to do all you can to make them think that they got it wrong. You're right. Yep. <laughs> so this is a very hurtful thing because that never was your intention. Those women, they, that was never their intentions to be this way. And this man left me like this. And, and, and you know what? And you know what? Some women out here have separated from their husbands, have divorced their husbands because they had to keep up the same mentality that their friends have seen for years, family have seen for years. And internally, they're saying, I still love him I love him so much. I wish I had him back. I oh, wish yeah. I had him back. Oh, yeah, but on the outside, her friends come over, girl, you seen your ex. Girl, ain't nobody worry about that nigga, girl. He gone with his life, oh, stupid nigga, da, 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 da. But inside, when she laying in the bed at night and she know that means to rub them feet, that means to make love to her, that means to bring her something to eat or cuddle up with her. And they just went through something that was so minute. Right. Yeah. Because, and and now you, you, you're living in regret. And now that adds another that adds another belt loop to what you to, to your resume. Right. Right. And, hey, Genesis. And hey, Sir Hill. It adds. Sir Hill speaks us in the it building. Adds, cars, cars. It's unfortunate. Oh, anyway. We'll get it. <laughs> don't, don't <laughs> these comments. Uh, it is unfortunate. Those spheres of directional uplifts end up being absorbed into the drama. drama sphere. Yes, you know sir. What? Straight drama sphere. I like that word too. I like that. You're right. And that's what we cling on to. That that is not who we are, but that's how we show up. Mm -hmm. And it's all real. See that all these things are be keep are keeping us from becoming one whole. Yes. Because in wholeness, we accept who we are. Exactly. And then we do better. We do better. We change our situation. We do better. We mm -hmm. we say, okay, look, there's nothing I can do about this. You know, sin is here. Sin is going to happen. Things are going to happen. We're going to do things that are not good. We're going to make mistakes. And when you can say, I'm going to make a mistake and then live with that mistake, you can mm -hmm. grow and never make that mistake again. Yep. And, and you know what? And, oh, Miss Creative, I was just about to say that and you put it in me. There we go. So I, I'm, I'm glad I'm going to go ahead and say it then. Okay, there, go ahead. Are, there are women out here that I've been married two, three, four, five times, right? Mm -hmm. And they're in their 50s. Mm -hmm. And they're in their 50s now. The technology is allowing them, right? Because let me say this first. When they file, we know that 70% of all divorces are filed by who? They say women. Mm -hmm. And for what? What reason? Well, I if irreconcilable differences is either, but it says it goes money goes underneath that and infidelity, you know. But the majority is differences. Isn't that something that can be healed so much if people just let go of their ego? But then when you then think about it, girl, I'm four. Oh, girl, I'm forty eight. Girl, I'm fifty three. It's about to go down, Vegas. What a minute! 
then then fast forward six months, six months later. I don't, you know what? These men ain't no good no way. I don't need them. I don't need them. I don't need them. Four months later. On TikTok. Y'all see that? <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, it's mine. Oh. Y'all just saying, you're just looking at me, playing with your hair and touching yourself. Come on, man. I mean, and now. Let me read this comment. Why high says security boss Jay Prince will not let a woman check him. Yes, should him. Yes, should have been a man putting Jay Prince in his place and you should have stood down. Oh, OK, good. Tell me, tell me exactly where I, I didn't feel like I was checking him. Jay Prince kind of called me out, but I don't know what part you saw. <laughs> I don't know what part you saw, but I agree with you. I'm not even interested in checking a Jay Prince or any grown man. So I definitely agree with you. But Dearly he, he kind of asked me questions and I just was telling him the truth about what he was saying. The part about the the stepdad, he just kind of went out in the, uh, on, on a limb. I don't think nobody saw that coming, but I agree with you. I, I definitely will. And guess what? We're going to drop the link in just a little bit. And I would love to hear more about what you think about that little interchange or exchange that we did last night. So definitely stay tuned and thank you for being here. So, um, you are, you are exactly right, black man. And, and, and so listen, are we playing games on TikTok pretending that we're good? And we're just as broken as possible. Oh yes, the, the one. The, let me tell you something. The woman that speaks the loudest is the woman is that that is the most lonely. Mm. So all this again is if we could realize that we're broken and seek wholeness, then we could get through this and be probably attract your mate. Right. And, and, and let me give you an example. The lovely and beautiful, enchanting, and well spoken, and well carry herself, Sister Genesis. Book of Genesis is in the crib tonight. Hey, Genesis, hey, how Genesis. are you? So, I will say something about Gen Genesis is a very beautiful and attractive black woman, regardless. I don't care who think what and how and when and then what it did, it, but Genesis says, I'm not the maturity of her waiting on her wholeness to take place. She said, I'm not, she went through something. I'll allow her to tell her own story, but she, she went through something traumatic yes. in a relationship yes. that was, that had nothing to do with cheating or it was loss of life. Right. And Genesis says, she's not going to move on to another man and attach that to another man because she says that she's not emotionally there yet. But she's, but do you see Genesis at, at her age on TikTok like this? <laughs> I bet not. <laughs> I bet not see Genesis up there with her head up right? in the No, 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 no. Genesis is not, and that's what I mean by the no. ones that speak the loudest are the ones that want the more attention. The one that the ones that speak loudest against men are the ones that are the most lonely. And you don't see her on none of these platforms talking about men, this men, because she's an advocate for men as well. Right? And so I, I just I I you know that's just what it is. We need to start being honest. It's time for us to be honest. You know you want the man. Stop trying to put on this show for your family and for your friends. Because your mama, your, your mama ain't gonna be able to rub them breasts and hold them tight while y'all curl up in the bed at night. Mm -hmm. She ain't gonna be able to do that. Your brother ain't gonna be able to come over there and make put passionate love to you and, and rub your feet and kiss your back. He ain't gonna be able to do that. And so you done got rid of this man because you want other people to still see you as what you were. And now you sit at home with a my pillow between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying that about that my pillow. Listen, why hi? Uh, you know what? You're gonna have to come up. You keep coming with these these comments, but you're gonna have to come up and tell me what you're trying to say. So he says, security boss, try to check Jay Prince, but never a woman that comes up with silliness. Really? <laughs> you saying I don't? <laughs> uh, who? Hey, you, he don't. Hey, no, he, no, forgive him. He don't watch a lot of you. That's what it is. He, he don't watch. Too, listen, I am so glad that you're here today and thank you so much for watching. Subscribe. I hope you subscribe to the channel, uh, Security Boss. And guess what? Become a part of SB Nation. Also, we have Black Man Unfiltered here. We're here every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern because you really do need to get to know Security Boss if you think that I don't check silliness. All in love. I really yep, do. Yep. That's but, a green tea um, moment. <laughs> but I definitely want to hear more about what you have to say. I definitely do. Listen, we got M Mills here the other day. She said, security boss, you may be being a little condescending. And I said, oh, help me. And she did. So you, you got you to gotta come join us a little bit more. You got to be here. But I appreciate you being here now. <laughs> definitely. So 
Oh, look at that comment. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Uh, okay, I've so seen a, I've seen a comment up here from uh, T. Shaw. She said, "But what happens when a person refuses to get healing?" Hmm. Uh, what she said. Oh, yeah. In marriage, even Jesus acts, "Will thou be made whole?" So let me hold on a second. Sorry, the security boss. Let me address this. So uh, the lovely uh, um, what, what was her? I don't want to say her name. T. Shaw. Let me say this to Yanni. If there's a story about Jesus and Jesus, and there's this woman at the well. Right. And at this well, Jesus walked up to this woman and she had slept with several men. Matter of fact, six, as mentioned. Right. And so she was out there. She was for the streets. Right. And uh, back then, there wasn't no streets. She was for the trails. And so and so even when she was for the trails, Jesus walked up to her. He didn't disown her. He didn't treat her any kind of way. But he said she just, she looked at Jesus like, mm, OK. And she's and Jesus told her in so many words, I'm paraphrase here. You have slept with all these men, mm -hmm. and the man that you're sleeping with now ain't yours. Uh, but what, well, what was he trying to tell? What did he want everybody to know? She was still doing what, 304 ing? Uh huh. Huh? He said, The man that, if you look, 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 he said, The man that you're sleeping with now, see, accountability. Even mm -hmm. then, Jesus was holding her accountable. All these men you slept with, mm -hmm. and the man you just left, the man room you just left out of ain't your husband either. Mm -hmm. But guess what? She he she had all that going on. Six men couldn't unravel it. Six men couldn't heal her because mm -hmm. they were tapping into her emotional distress. But then those six men, she met Jesus number seven. And when she met number seven, we all know the definition of number seven is the number of what? Completion. Completion. That means she was made whole in that relationship. Oh, I'm preaching. Somebody get Oh, but you know what? I never thought about this. Did you think that at one point in time she thought that um that Jesus might have been for the streets also and he just surprised her? Uh-huh. Yeah, because she approached him like, oh, look at this man. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then mm -hmm. he showed her something different. And mm -hmm. like you said, mm -hmm. undid that unravel those layers. And he yep. did it like this. Boom. He did something the other men couldn't do. He did it instantly. Yep. And, and told her what she thought was a secret because that particular man was nowhere around. So he he even got into her head and told her. And she said, oh, this is wrong the with your business. You're uh -huh. not going to do this no more. Yep. He made yep. her whole just that instance. Mm, well, that's what we got to do in order to be whole. But again, I do want to hear you all. I want y'all to tell us about this wholeness for you because I often don't believe that we go into marriages whole because I often believe we, we go into marriages not knowing quite who we are. Um, Cause a lot of things that are not said until you know that you can trust the person that you're with. You know, you tell a woman, you tell a fiance too many things. She will put that out there. She'll say, Oh, this happened. Oh, this happened. You know, and we can't have that, you know? Miss so you, you got something you need to read. Go ahead. Nah, yeah. Miss creative. She responded back to what I just said. She said, but what, again, what happens in marriage when the other person refuses to get healing at that point, uh, for me, uh, when that person refuses to get healing, I don't, at that point, I know that it's something else and something else, meaning it's not that person, but it's what's in that person. And so what we have to do is find out what's in that person. And take and try to get it out. And sometimes that takes meditation. Sometimes it's take prayer. Sometimes it's take fasting. Whatever it is you do spiritually, if you are a spiritual person, sometimes it takes that. Okay, right then, now. This is a perfect time. Okay. Thank you, Lou Casely, for the twenty dollars hey. for the ten dollar super chat, and you get the money line song. And money line. So listen, I want to say something on Miss Creative's. Uh, oh, uh, the uh, pair character jumping up and down, saying "number one fan." This pair character, where is it at? You have to see it in the emoji style. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have to see oh, it. Okay, you have to see it. So, um, listen, I want to say something to that because, um, you know what? Everybody is not the same, and I agree to it, and I agree with that totally. But I'm, I'm envisioning a woman and a man in a conversation, a husband and a wife. And he's actually um, being vulnerable, vulnerable enough to her or with her to actually share with her a spot that is sore. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a man that vulnerable enough to share would be not a man that would run away from a healing. I'm, I'm seeing that as a man that's crying out 
for a healing. I don't know how you can um, allow someone in on your brokenness, your true brokenness. I'm talking about the brokenness that stunts your growth. I'm talking about the brokenness that changes who you are. And then when it's been revealed and now we're talking about it, you know, we're growing up for it from it. We're, we're saying what happened. We're talking about it. It's no longer, we're peeling it off, but then I'm running away. Now see, love is what takes care of that. So I, I, I Miss Creative, I don't know, and I'm sure. No, no that wasn't Miss Creative. That was Miss uh, T. Shaw. Oh, T. Shaw. I'm sorry, Miss T. Shaw. I don't. I'm envisioning that, and to me, it doesn't play out that way. But I see what you're saying. I I hear what you're saying, but I'm I'm just thinking that kind of vulnerability when a man or woman is is talking about th those sore spots. You see, those sore spots are spots that nobody ever touches. But somebody say the wrong thing, you. You click, you know, mm -hmm. you go off because they just touched it and didn't know they did. Right. But when you start telling people what those sore spots are, that means you you taking them layers off yourself. So either you want to be healed or you just tired of being heavy. Either one, it's time to, it's time for somebody to jump in there. You know, even if it's a therapist or whatever, it's time to be healed from that. It's time we, we're trying to be whole now. It's trying exactly. we're trying to grow up. We're trying to, you know, say, you know what? I've been walking around this. I'm so heavy. I'm so sore from this. I need something. And I just can't imagine somebody refusing to be healed if they're already um, pulling those layers off. But again. Yeah. And, and then, like you said, we separate ourselves from things when things get too hard. And I think that's why in the black community, marriage is up 70 percent. I mean, divorce is up 70 percent because of that reason. We when when things get when things are great. Oh, girl, we on couples trips, girl. We on our trip together, girl. We 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 are loving on each other. But as soon as he makes a mistake, she makes a mistake. The separation comes. I ain't signed up for this. Yes, she did. I, I'm going to love you through good times and bad times. I'm going to love you. He always sick through sickness and in hell. Girl, he broke his hell through <laughs> for richer or for poor. We we have to understand that these vows mean something. And I and I recommend people right now that's watching this go home to your wife your, or your husband, and I want you to tell your husband. Stop by the store and pick up some salt. And I'm going to stop by the store and pick up some salt over here. You get your brand you like, I'm going to get my brand that I like. And when we come home, we're going to find a mason jar. And I'm going to pour mine in because my salt will represent, my brand of salt will represent me. You're going to pour yours in because your brand of salt represents you. And you both pour it into the mason jar together. And then once you pour it into the mason jar, there's a, a really good lesson to learn from that. I want you to pour it out on the counter. After you guys do it, throw it away. Pour the mason jar on the counter. I want you to separate your salt from his. You're not able to do it because you became whole. Mm. So the salt absorbs water. So now when your husband is out of line or your wife is out of line, that salt, that that that, that salt represents uh, uh, the thing that pulls the love in. So it draws it in. It pulls it in. It becomes that thing that you stay on. And another thing I recommend, I'm going to drop the mic. Get you a nice little chest. Go find you an antique chest. Some real cute women like to shop. Find you one. Open it up. And I want you to take something special from every part of your life, whether it was a trip you took with him, whether it was a, the shoot from your first child together when you guys experienced that memory, where was your first kiss, where's a picture of where you guys were, whatever it is. And I want you to put those 10 of those things in a box. Mm -hmm. And I want you to leave them there and put it away. And when you run into those situations where you where you can't, when you feel like that person can't be healed or that person can't do anything, go and find that box and open it up and remind yourself why you made that commitment. Man, come on. Yeah. It's simple. Some stuff, divorce, some divorces don't even have to happen oh, because I, I, all it I takes believe you. I believe all you. it takes is a conversation. So listen, I think it was talk hell. What happened to Dr. P talk hell just had a comment. I think it was hers. I wanted to read her a comment if we can get it back up. It wasn't just yeah. at the end of the day we came through together. Exactly. It wasn't that one. Um, I think it was this one. Sometimes wholeness is through. Sometimes wholeness is going through. You never plan for it and both have to be whole when I face a rare condition. I experienced I experienced that my husband mentally uh, carried on. it. You got it? Carried it. Yeah, carried it. He yeah, went he, went, it went, he went, went through what I went through. through. What you went through. Okay. Right. Yeah, definitely. But that's, you know what, that was a question. And talk, hey, if you got time, I definitely want you to come up. You've already basically told your story. But my question is, do you have to be whole once you to go into a relationship? Mm -mm. I actually think 
that is that that could be for some the first step to becoming whole because otherwise we walk around here as damaged people all the time and yeah. it could become mental illness it could become a lot yeah. of things it be, yeah. could become a well it all kind of falls under that you know yeah. men you know, women ugh, i ain't gonna talk about it but you know yeah wash your skin it's hard it's Women have a lot of partners, mm -hmm. men, um, perversion, you know, all of that. So, Dr. Panderson, how are you, sir? Did, well. I, did I catch you in the middle of something? No, we're good. I was really expecting to be brought up first, but it's all good. Hey, oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, uh, hold on one second. Talk Hell said you should be whole. Mm. Mm. That's it. That's good. Mm hmm. That's really good. I want to hear about that if you have time. So, Dr. Panderson, do you want to talk about what we're talking about now? Do you want to talk? Because we you got the best two people here. Because I think I was on Black Man Show when we initially started that, wasn't I? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's cool. It's up to you. It's your show. No, it's okay. Cool. But do you do you want to add something to being hold? To being whole? Yeah, yeah, the wholeness. The question where we are today is what is your um what is your meaning of being whole? Crazy. Um, try not to use certain words because I was going to say being complete, but okay. um, okay. The easiest way to put it, man was made to be with a woman. Woman was made to be with a man. That's how this works. Um, two people are better than one. Four eyeballs see more than two. <laughs> you can't have a family without a man and a woman. But if those expectations, like that should be the standard, or like the plan, okay, and we're going to get married and have a family, like in that order, should actually be the plan. And somehow it just isn't like that anymore. Mm. But you should be able to depend on each other, count on each other, and be able to grow together. I it shouldn't be one carrying the other and, or, you know, vice versa. I agree with that, but sometimes it does look like that for a time. I do think that we all are on, on it. Sometimes it's good. And then sometimes it's not, you know, uh, men have it's like what we're talking about now. Sometimes um, there are things that you've never, ever dealt with. They're in your childhood that you probably before being married said to yourself, you're going to take it to your death. But then when you marry a woman and she shows you this love, not necessarily unconditionally, but something that you've never seen before, your layers begin to fall off or you become more vulnerable. And then she's you know, if you if you if she's a good one, she's studying you, you know, she's looking at you, she's she's paying attention to who you are and she's asking questions. You know, it could be something simple as, babe, why you why you act so out of order when you you drop some Kool-Aid on the ground? It's OK. You know, then you got to tell her why. Oh, it's nothing. Nothing. It ain't no big deal. I, I don't, don't want to drop nothing. But OK. OK. And then you drop something again. She might you might tag, you know, you really overreact. And so. The questions become more and more. And then you be like, you know, you know, later on, maybe two years, three years from now, you might say something like, because when I was a kid, I couldn't drop anything. It was like I had to go stand in the corner all day or I couldn't have dinner or whatever. Some sort of some sort of form of abuse might have stemmed from dropping something or spilling something on the ground from your parents. Who knows? I'm just getting, I'm just talking to you. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Black Man. No, no, I, I just want to say this before you said this. So while you guys were talking, I was looking it up. And here it shows here that in marriages, this is all racist. Um, they said 64.9% of mental illnesses happen in the in the first two years of marriage, if they're going to happen, uh, but mostly in the first after the first six years. So if you can so basically you can't if if this person has a mental uh, untapped mental illness they don't know they have or, or it haven't even happened yet, what if this happens after year six? How can, how can you be whole <laughs> and after six years you snap something in your something happens in, in the relationship something happens at your job something happens that brings back something in your mind and you have a mental illness so actually what you're saying is you were not whole and then that first six years of that marriage you didn't do the work to become whole or you never became one with your spouse so it just compounded so now right, you're taking right. on the wife and now your representative no longer can show up. So you add it on to the stress mm -hmm. of whatever you did not heal from. Right. And so by year six, you just done. You fool. Right. And it says here the number one thing, sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Say mo They say most women and men that are sexually assaulted clears it 
oh my God, clears it out of their <laughs> minds. And when a spouse asks for certain sexual gestures, it always, always, sometimes always in sample sizes creates the mental illness and takes them back to the PTSD they experienced when they had the trauma. Oh, listen to that. Now that's deep. So wait, hold oh. on. Roman says, do your best to enter a relation in a marriage relationship whole. It's not totally whole, if not totally whole. Your significant other needs to be made aware of your issues beforehand. This allows <laughs> it to make informed decisions to continue to continue. You know what, bro, man? I agree with that. But I still uh, I still know that that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because if I if a man just recently said to me, I'm taking this to death. That means he does not want any, anybody to know what happened to him. Nobody. But I can tell you in a good relationship, a good marriage relationship, the layers start to fall off because it's love. They start to fall off. And then what, what you got then? You got nothing but vulnerability. You know, there's no more walls. You know, if you have walls, there's going to be uh, stuff that's going to be still keep piling up on that wall. And then you're going to. Mm -hmm. You know, something can happen at year six. Right. But if you let it go and she's a good woman or a good man, they'll put that time into you to help you get to that point. So I got to sneeze y'all. But anyway, Big Bad Bull, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. And here we got the super chat song. Money line. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Yeah, yeah. I got to see. Excuse me for a minute. Get it out. Get it out. Uh-oh. 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 Get it out. Ladies and gentlemen. Remix it. Remix it. Ladies and gentlemen. The sneeze remix. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. Y'all help me out. It didn't come. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. All right. I got it. Okay. So, Dr. Panderson. Okay. So, listen, I'm going to bring black men into this, uh, what you and I talked about a little bit last night. So, he'll know. Okay. Okay. No, I'm okay. telling Panderson. I'm no, no, okay. Okay. So, black man. Yeah, we're going to bring y'all into this because this is a good topic also. And it kind of leads into what, um, kind of leads into what we're talking about now. Also, um, Black Man Unfiltered had a show on Friday. Mm -hmm. No, it was Tuesday. Tuesday. Talk that talk. It was Tuesday. And um, we were talking about how there are groups of people that are on YouTube or in YouTube spaces. And they're actually telling people to uh, delete black babies, black baby boys to be yep. right. And um, I've heard and I've heard it for years that um, the black man, the number of black men will be extinct. And I don't I don't know the year right now. I used to know it, but I don't know it now. But because you know why I don't want to know it, because every time some time goes by, it, we get closer and closer to it. So I just don't want to remember the year. I don't remember. It. Don't say it, black man. <clears throat> anyway, and everybody, most of you probably know the extinction number. It, it just simply just means there will be black men here, but the number of available black men that can actually produce children and that are available to do so, it won't be, the numbers will be so low, it'll be the number of extinction, just like whales and things of that nature, right? Um, because of incarceration and alternative lifestyles. That was really, and then of course, killing, you know. Mm. So, can I say that word? Nope, deleted. Deletion. But I wasn't talking about that, but y'all know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crime, crime, crime. Okay. Yeah, 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 crime. Yeah. So anyway, um, my comment when I was leaving out, Panderson, I don't even think I don't know that you were there. I wasn't talking to you particularly. I think this was one of my final words. My final, final word is this. This is what my final word, and I'm I'm still sticking to my final word. And I say this because um when I hear stuff like that. It scares me because I can't not imagine this world without black men. Right. And I don't know if people take their life very serious or not, but I do. And I'm imagining my life without not without having men, black men to protect me or to pet, protect us. And it's very scary that it's not enough of you out there to protect us. So I say it, men, 
if you're really serious about our community, now I'm going to go back to this about our community. I'm saying the black community because uh, there are a lot of good, good people in this community. There are some bad. But there are a lot of good, a whole lot of good. And I can't I can't act like they're not. There are a lot of good. We got some bad ones, though. I, I absolutely agree with that. So anyway, my point was, if we're sincere about this and we want to continue on in this, uh, you know, we're already a minority. We know that. But if we want to continue with this race, I said black men need to get more serious about choosing their wives. Because so often in these YouTube platforms, I hear men talk so reckless and shallow about what they're looking for in women. Very reckless, very shallow. It's almost like you don't love us at all. And I think there is an obligation. It's an obligation, it's a duty for black men to love black women and for black women to love black men. I almost think that should be the one of the top things on your lifts. Love, them, love us as people, you know, love us as people first. And then, of course, find your mate, you know. So that was what I said. So then last night, I think it was, yes, Panderson said, security boss, why did you say what I just said? I said, right? And I told him just what I just said, because I hear so many shallow things. It's very shallow. And I'm hearing this only in the YouTube streets. It's very shallow to say, uh, I got to have a woman that's a 10, or seven, eight, or nine. That's very shallow because being married is so much deeper than that. We just talked about it a minute ago. We talked about how you could be pierced uh, in some sort of dysfunction as a child and you carry it with you as a young adult and you bring it into a marriage and a woman can love you through, love those layers of hurt and pain off of you. But if she's not a 10, then she can't even be in the house with me. Dearly beloved. That's ridiculous. So then I hear a lot of other things, but none of them, none of them actually mean anything about how this woman is or who this woman is. Right. Nobody, nobody knows anything. You know. You know, nobody knows. Nobody knows anything. Nobody's nobody's saying anything that has any substance to it. It's always a physical or this a physical that or like I said, it sometimes almost sounds like we actually men actually hate women and women actually hate men. And I'm saying if somebody told you tomorrow, that if you don't create 10 of us by the end of the month, there's not going to be any more of us by the end of the year. And the ones that are here will be working for the next man. So that kind of scares me. Because I don't want my grandbabies working for the next man. I would love for them to be in numbers enough creating for themselves. But see, nobody takes it that serious because we're living in this moment and everything is good. I got a good job. I'm doing this, this, and I want this, and I want that. So that's that's why I said what I said, Panderson. So go ahead and say what you have to say. Um, I'll gladly volunteer for the hot seat. Uh, yep. my, my mic. I'll volunteer for the hot seat. You asked the question. Okay. Well, no, it was to respond to the question because I remember you asked it on uh, Tuesday, but then you had dipped out. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it's not a hot okay. seat because I'm I, would, I didn't care to talk about it or not. I mean, I thought I okay. made myself, I thought I made myself very clear on what I was saying, but again, if if you didn't get the gist of it, I'm glad I'm saying no. it again. No, I get what you're saying, and you know, even when there's disagreements, I always am pro security boss, pro black man, unfiltered. But um, what it was, it was a hey. Men, there's things that you want. There's things that you say that you need. And there's things that you say that you want. And then there's the man that you are. Would you be willing for black? Would you be willing to go and take some, take and go to keep us married and have a black family? Go and get something that you don't want. I'm exaggerating, but intentionally. Um, what is the point of becoming the best version of yourself as a man? to go and get something that you don't want, or there's a reason that this is not where you, you, this is not the spouse for you because of black. Black doesn't have a community. It doesn't exist. If you look up the definition of community, people moving alike with religion and co common values, actions, they're all over the place to the point where black doesn't accept black. And we say what's acceptable, what's cool, what is, I don't even know. I have mm -hmm. no, I honestly don't even have a clue. 
So if you're too street, then you're too hood. If you're too rich, then how come you didn't give? You're too poor, you broke, you too tall. How can I don't even know? So when we talk about a community, I don't know what it is. The people are not working together and people don't even accept community support, help, whatever. And it's so buried in victim Olympics that the men who, who are promoting patriarchy have to separate themselves for survival reasons. I won't go and marry to go and support that. Honestly, that would be enabling. That's saying, hey, girl, you can just stay the way you are and you can go get a husband. Good ones, too. So 10 years later, that's actually going gonna, gonna to look worse. Just like when women say, hey, why don't the best men go and, and start helping and saving the kids and go and chasing down Pookie and Ray Ray holding them account? Okay, well, now you just enabled saying, hey, we can pop our kids. The good man going to come save us and we can keep. Well, he got the kids. I can go to another Pookie and Ray Ray. So at the end of the day, the man becomes product, the best version of himself to go out and get the best thing that he can get. And there's no black loyal race to these to a lot of these black men. And honestly, black is skin. Now you're saying Christian race, that's a little different. But black, they're just black. Well, I'm speaking of people your color, black, brown, whatever you want to call it. And I'm talking mm -hmm. about the race of people. I'm not saying the community. I'm talking about the race of people. I'm talking about the minority that we are. I'm talking about it being less. And see, you you too, you are one of those people right now. You're speaking as though there are not any good women here. I didn't you say just that. Said, well, no, you, you did, because I'm going to tell you exactly what you said. Oh, girl, you can go have a baby because a good one going to come and save you. No, no. Or you go pick and find something that you don't want. No, I didn't say any of that. I want you to find exactly what you do want. So why would you speak to what you don't want? You just said, oh, so now women, you, you spoke about all the negative that women could be looking no. for the good man. Well, I'm saying to you that there's an equivalent out there for you, an equivalent. Oh. So you I was replying to when you said, one, you're saying men are shallow, men being shallow for asking for a seven, eight, nine or 10 and referring to, would you be willing to accept like starting there? Would you be willing versus, Hey, I've got a fantastic reward prize, super beautiful waiting for you. Willing to accept already implies that this is a, there's a dude sitting in a marriage picture smiling like this. That's what it implies. <laughs> no, I'm saying to you, there's an equivalent for you. There is an equivalent, but you don't need to judge her on her physical only. Like I'm saying, if she, if you walk by her and she's a six, still talk to her because she may be a 10 in personality and in accomplishments. But there are some men that are so shallow that wouldn't even speak to her because she's not an eight or to them, because, you know, a, a, an eight to you may be to you may actually be a five to somebody else. I'm just saying. And it, but even in your even in your scenarios that you just gave, you said. So, girl, go ahead and have those babies as a good man that's going to come and save you. I don't want you to have to do that. I'm just yeah, saying I'm just talking about referring to commit to community. And I'm exaggerating. OK, no, I'm not. So I'm we, we can void that out. What I said, what we can void that out. I was applying to something different. OK, forget community. I'm talking about the race of people that we identify with as in minorities, brown skin, chocolate, however you want to identify black. I'm telling you, if there's not enough of you around here, then we are in trouble. And um, if oh, go ahead, go ahead. We are in trouble. We're just in trouble. And that's what I'm talking about, because it's it's bigger. It's bigger than just finding that perfect woman, because even when you find her. You know, say she out of those 10 things you wrote down, she was all 10. But then after you married her, the, the representative uh, showed the representative is no longer there. And now the real deal start coming out. Would you leave her or would you stay and say, OK, you know what? I did it. I'm in it now. Or would you be like, I don't like her anymore. I'm, I'm getting ready to move on because, see, I happen to think when you put them vows behind it, things become real. And things change a little bit. So are you willing to stick in there if she meets all those initial characteristics? Or 
you know, is that going to be death? Do you part? Or are you later on going to be like, well, shoot, she's not what I think. She's not, excuse me. She's not what I thought. So I'm, I'm ready to move on and find me another one. Would it be that then? Or, you know, what's going to take you from here to the end? Okay. I'm saying that should be your thought process, not necessarily the beginning. Okay. One, the shallowness is times three on the other side. On the women's side. Yeah, but the women don't make the babies. Really? They, don't. they do not. No. Stark deliver them? Women. <laughs> the Stark, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Uh, they do. They do. If you want to go that far, yeah, they do. But I'm but talking about. And according to yesterday, because the women, they're not having sex. It's all the men. Huh? What, what, who they have to say? What? <laughs> don't tell me no, don't tell me. I, no, the men make the babies. The women carry the babies. But I need, we need you all. We need it. Uh, but hold on. Here's the thing. Okay. Men are visual. These eyeballs, when we I see agree. them, mm -hmm. it is not going to change. I agree Things with you. Like that. People mm -hmm. work seven hard years in the Bible to get the better. That's what it is. I agree. It's not going to change. I agree. So if women want men to perform better and be better men, go to the gym. <laughs> They're in there listen, waiting. Listen. But here's the thing. If women won't give men what they want, they will not marry. It's not lowering the bar and coming in. And, but, oh, off track. Men are visual. It doesn't change. Right. Men want what they want. And men have worked and bled to be the person that they are. Right. Therefore, when they come out and they're looking for their counterparts, they shouldn't be asked to, to take less. As well as I don't as know what less means, but how I'm, to, I don't know what less is this. Okay, how the woman so. treats herself, how the woman treats her man, poor family values and loyalty, and coming without someone else's children. Okay, so that's not the woman you're gonna be with, though. But yeah, but see what I'm asking to you, what I'm saying to you on that physical thing you're speaking of, make sure that physical thing thing takes you to death. So look at it like that. Look at it and say, hmm, is this is, is this gonna take me to death? And if you if you're honestly being serious about it and looking at this woman and saying, you know what, I believe this right here take me to death, I have no issue with you at all. None well, whatsoever. Just being honest. If she's overweight, that death might be 12 years and we can't even raise the kids. Listen, it doesn't matter. If you're telling me that you you put you evaluated it that seriously, I am on your plan now. If you looked at that woman, you chose her based on her physical to take you to death. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. And Whatever she's you already say. Already pre-diabetic eating Doritos. I'm agreeing with you. Whatever you she say. Be, she's not going to be here to take the care of the kids. Right. That was the woman you chose, right? No, I'm saying this is not. When you're saying, hey, would you be willing to lower, you know, adjust your standards to make sure you can have a black family? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to you, I need you to be more serious about your standards and what you're choosing, because if your standards can take you to death, if you can pick somebody honestly today and you could say what you see is what you like and that could take you to death, I'm fine with it. But see, I think sometimes men get so caught up on their shallowness in the moment it will not take them to death. And then somewhere along the line, about three years, four years, they want to get out of it again because she's did this or she's done this or she don't look the same way or she has breast cancer. She had to remove one breast or we had to cut our hair off. See, I want you to get through those tough times. So and, and saying, it, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I just want you to be serious enough about mm -hmm. finding that woman that it gets you through the real life situation, real life, because anything can happen with this woman. You know, you worried about 300 pounds. You might need to worry about 95 pounds because because it, it don't look good either. Oh, I'm willing to accept. OK, I'll explain it. Like people ask me when I talk about weight, they always take shots at the chat or whatever. And they like, well, what if she had this? What if this? What if this? Or and I'm like, health? Yeah, I'm going to stand by my wife at 500 pounds, at 56 pounds. Something happened. I'm going to be there. Okay, so Panderson, I'm going to challenge you on that because just because your wife had a health issue that made her 500 pounds, it didn't change you or make you less of a physical being. No, I'm going to be there. No, I, it don't make you less of a physical being, though. you still a physical being, right? I'm you still that be, man. I'm going to be there with my sick, 
500 pound wife administering medicine, washing ankles and toenails, I will be there. But I won't be there for the one who's eating Doritos on the couch, who just wouldn't do. The sick one, I will be there. The one who decided to come out here knowing men are visual, but I decided, ah, this man worked hard for 20 years to build himself. I think he should take this. That woman. You're right. Is, We're not, we don't even want right. her to be a part. We don't even want her in the family. You're exactly right. Hold that thought. Mr. Steele, how are you? Hey, I'm doing fine. And you? Doing good. So listen, uh, you sound good the first time in. So we got to get you. No mini Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. what happened was I did come in and then go back out and came in again. Just to make oh, you sure did do it? <laughs> you <Yeah>. tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you know what to do now. So listen, how do you want to add to this conversation? You can add to either one because this is this is a, a we're concluding from last Tuesday at Black Men's Show or we can speak about the wholeness of today's or whatever you like to add to the conversation. Well, the way I look at things now and you know, being in four relationships in my life, you know, to me, it's all about what I don't want more than what I do want. Mm. I have, I have been, you know, with all types of women, but did not really, you know, satisfy, even though one or two of them might have, have great attitudes. And I would feel bad about that. So I think it's best to know what you do not want. I've been with an, I've been with an obese woman once. Okay. Yeah, she had a great attitude, but you know, there are other things, you know, you know, that didn't really resonate with me about her. Um, I've been with one. Who was broken? Who wasn't whole? Because she had she had history. Uh, I've been with one who was uh, uh, who was a little bit of a feminist. I've been with one person, and I've been with one person who just wanted to have sex a million times a day. And yeah, I'm a sexual person, but come on now. Not all the time, you know. So, you know, you know, I've learned from these four relationships. And basically what had happened was, you know, I let them pursue me. I ended up accepting it. And it's come to the point where, you know, now it's time you know, for me to know, to go for what I want. Or should I? And, and, and and to do that for me is knowing what you don't want. That's where it is. I don't care if she's a 10, I don't care if she's a five or a six. Okay. Um, you know, if she has something that you know that I don't want, can't do it. Okay, that's the bottom line. Okay. Can you want to share with something? Do you know right now what's something you don't want? Because I'm going to put y'all on the referrals. I'm taking some referrals. That still goes, right? Y'all know I'm putting y'all on the list, right? Right. Because I'm going to find y'all some wives. Okay. I'm not. You into... straighten up your face. You're still on the list. I'm finding oh. your wife. Oh, okay. Go okay. ahead, Mr. Steele. <laughs> well, for one thing, again, I'm not into overweight women. Okay. I do not like. Bad at I do not like a bad attitude. No, you're uh, right. I do not. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not just about looks. I'm all about attitude too. Because there are some women who 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 may look the best. They may look like tens, but but can have a bad attitude as well. Mm -hmm. and I don't want that. Uh, I want one who where you know she could treat me the way I would treat her, basically. Okay. Um, I would like to be the leader, but I also want to let her know that, you know, I want to be her significant other. I don't want to be her master. Hmm. I do not want to be her master. But so, do you want to make the final decision? Say it again? I say, but do you I would prefer to... that, yes. Okay. I would okay. really prefer that. Okay. 
That sounds good. All oh. right, I got, I got, I, I'm taking the list, right? Y'all know that. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm taking the list. We're gonna, we're gonna find y'all some. I think all men that want to be married need to be married. So we're making a list. We are. Yeah. We definitely yeah. are. Now, even though I'm not as desperate as people think, it is a concern to where I'm basically the tip, tip of a branch in my family tree right now. Okay. I am a tip mm. because, because I mean, I'm an only child. I am. And I would really like to continue my immediate family. You and know, right I, now you have no children and you got some prospects. Prospects? Women? Yeah, women. Uh, well, right now, I'm actually going to silver singles right now. Okay. But, you know, right now I haven't, I only seen very few prospects right now at silver singles. And by the way, black women are my first choice right now. It is my first choice. Um, uh, a dating coach did advise me, you know, you know, to go out and, you know, during COVID, there's not very many places mm, where I right. could go. I know this. I know yesterday, uh, I had an opportunity. You know, Ebenezer uh, Church in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, they had they had the in -serv service yesterday. I wanted to register to it, but I came too late. So that was that was a missed chance for me. You know, to do that. Did Warnock preach yesterday? They got somebody else preaching. Uh, I know Warnock was preaching, but they said they also had a guest preacher as well. Okay, okay. So listen, Mr. Steele, let me ask you a question. Um, what age limit are you looking for in a woman? How how young can she be? Well, I would say the youngest I could take is basically either 35 or 40. That's it. I do not want to uh, let me tell you. I am not one of these old men who would date women who are young enough to be my daughter. <laughs> I, I don't do that. <laughs> All right. I'm taking referrals. I'm for real about that. So listen, mm -hmm. have anything else particular? Okay. Age is one thing. You said attitude was your most important. Is there anything else that I need to look out for? Uh, not that I could really think of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So is there anything you got any um, last words? Because I'm going to go ahead and continue to rotate everyone out because I am taking so all y'all single besides black man, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, Big Bad Bull in the comments, he, he said he's looking for Miss Bull. Miss <laughs> Bull? Where's she at? No, he want Miss Bull. Yeah, he's looking for a woman. Oh, okay. Too. Look, I already told him. We we know. See, I'm see, I'm taking notes. Y'all don't know what I'm doing, but I'm serious about <laughs> this. I've been telling y'all this for weeks. So. We're taking referrals. So, Mr. Steele, did you have anything else you wanted to add? As any closing words that you want to leave with us for today? Uh, well, the only thing I want to do is I want to reiterate something about the manosphere because, again, you know, I didn't know much about, about the manosphere. Right. I, I, I really didn't. And all this thing that's going on in the manosphere made me even more confused right now. <laughs> but all I do know, and like I said last night on the panel, the ministry has the word man in it. You know, it should be something that pertains to, you know, the man, men, whether, um, you know, we having a voice, we're, we're having our voice, or we come together, you know, to brainstorm how to solve our problems. That's what I thought the manuscript was about at first. Um, right. You know, but then I saw here a little a while back when we were talking about it, um, somebody in the chat put about, I think it was about four different women that were a part of the Manosphere, though. They listed about four different women that were a part of it. And, and, and you know, I actually listen to these women, you know, they, they've listed. Yeah, I, I okay. love listening to them. But, you know, this is my opinion. They, sh they really shouldn't even be in this space at all since you know, basically we're dealing with man problems. I'm not saying women don't know anything about them. Okay. In fact, I would even listen to their advice. Like I said, most of the content queers, I listen to all black women, but still, you know, man spear, 
you know, the word man means man. Right. They shouldn't be in there at all. I can agree with that. So something has happened. There's been some sort of a breakdown from some way. And I guess I don't know if they're trying to rebuild or what the situation I, I, is. I, 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 you know, tell you what I think. Uh, really? you think yes. I think that a lot of these women, I'm, I'm just being real. I'm all for the men's fear. I'm all for men's rights, men's men, men to do, get, you know, understand their value, all this good stuff. I think some of these women that came into this space and quadrupled uh, subscriptions, they got more viewers, they got more likes than the oh, men. Oh, oh, you saying they're using them? They're using the space. Now, yeah, where the women, I'm, I'm telling you, some of those men that's been there for years probably have mm, 150, 200 people watching. That's low, right? But you got some of these women that be in there, 1.3K watching, right? 900 watching, 800. And you look, and they, the men looking like, whoa, 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 I've been here for 10 years. You ain't finna come in here and, and steal my shine. You crazy as hell. Oh, no. oh, so you think it's some sort of competition? I see. I mean, it could, it could, men are very competitive, and we create this space, and you come in here, and I'm up here, got 400 people watching, and you got 1,000? Oh, no, that's not going to work. We got to get you up out of here. I'm, mm. I'm just... Man, what you think, Eugene? Well, you know... Those women are very popular over there. Yeah, and I see why. And like I say, those four women, that li I listen to these women. Mm -hmm. But again, um, mm. they shouldn't even, shouldn't even be in the space. You know, we need to solve our own problems. Just like black people as a whole, we need to come together and solve our own problems. Mm -hmm. Don't depend on anybody else. Okay, so I'm a little confused about that when you say that. So because it has the man's name on it, you're talking about that particular form the woman shouldn't be, but they can advocate and do the same thing in their own space and still yeah, come yeah. Yeah. together. Yeah, can, yes. And mm -hmm. still come together with the men, but just don't be in the same space as the men. Yeah, I think that's and I think that's uh the per that's perfectly said actually. Yeah. Yeah, just to come to space, support us. Yes, we need your support. Right. But just not in the manosphere. That's all. Right. Not in that particular space. So I, I, I think I hear what you're saying. I don't think that would have been a big because it's not going to change anything unless they felt like by um, telling the women you can't be a part of it, it would have. And that may be something that happened. It may have lost all the followers because the men would have maybe may follow the women. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. would be a huge problem if that happens. Yeah. Like I say, they can support us. Yes. It, and, and that's really why I listen to these women. They they support <coughs> us. Mm. They support us. Just well, not in the continue to um continue to, you know, continue. I would say continue to listen to them. I mean, don't don't change anything that you do unless they can Unless the women are doing something incorrect, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I really, listen, I know less than you do. <laughs> so I have no idea what they're doing. But listen, thank you so much for that. And again, I'm still taking referrals. I got some, I got some information on you. If I come across something, or if I want you to be a part of something, I hope you'll be open minded to it. And um, we'll see what we can do because I, I, I really do. Any, all men that want to be married, I want them to have a wife. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. And thank you for having me on here. Sure, no problem. And thank you for being here. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Dr. Panderson, you got something else you want to add? You want to disagree with me some more? Because you know I'm taking um taking notes, right? I got your I got your list already. Your list is about this long. So secure about actually it's not, but it's really no, not that long. For me listening to you, it's about that long. What of what okay. I want? Yeah. Security boss. Yes. Did sir. you get an opportunity to see when you left? Question, go ahead. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Was that Friday? No, Tuesday. When you guys left, the ladies left. Did you happen to watch any after that? They had a two, almost a two-hour conversation. I think was right, Doctor Branderson. Who was about that? about that very thing about weight after Who? you left Tuesday? Left Tuesday. No, I'm saying after she left the show Tuesday. After Security Boss, after you left, we were about to end the show, but the show went on for another hour and a half. Talking specifically about what men want and how men don't like heavy women. Yeah, or they don't like. It keeps happening as we keep. Yeah, you gotta go back and watch it. 
the thing is, as we keep saying this, there's women saying, no, you're going to take this. You, which, something's wrong with your eyes. Why you need that? What's, it's like, look, men say what they wanted. Is this really real, Panderson? Yes. Is somebody saying these things to you? I mean, are you yes. just, are, no, let's be honest. Let's be serious. Let's have a serious moment. Uh -oh. Serious. No, I'm serious. I'm, and I'm, I'm, you know, you're saying yes. to someone that I want a slim woman that is physically fit, that doesn't mind going to the gym. And, and then her comeback to you is, why you want that? Why you can't just have what you get? I mean, is that, are you seriously saying that someone is approaching you that way and that's their comeback? Yes. Now, what, where exactly is this? Tell the me, tell me. Right it's in the chat right now. Okay, so tell me what someone said in the chat that sounds it's just implied. like. It's implied in the chat. Okay. Right? A man no, no. asking for something. It's all the time when a man asks for something and says what a standard is. It's okay. always met with rejection. That's the norm. Yeah. And here's it's the not, thing. Here's no, it's not thing. met with rejection. Or it's met with, well, why are you... But okay, so wait a minute. The way you say it, the way you say it is different, right? You say, I don't want a 300 pound woman. So why can't you say, and then you could say it the way you want to, but I would, rather, I would rather you hear, I'd rather hear what you want, though. I like to have okay. a woman that is fit to compete. Security okay. boss, are you part of the manosphere? No, I don't think so. I mean, you, you are. I am. Yep. Oh, you can just be a somebody can just make you a part of it. Oh no, you are for real. And when they find out about you, you're gonna blow up even bigger than you are now. Watch. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. How do you just become a part of a manosphere? Well, they have know. a list. They have a list of people that they that they insert into the manosphere probably every quarter. I can and explain so it, but you won't like that. You won't like the way that I explain it. Why, Panderson? Why I won't like it? You're gonna be honest, aren't you? Okay. I hate to say that there's a almost like a race war. But the, the manosphere is speaking from the man's point of view, trying to help men find wives. It doesn't okay. matter if you come off soft, red pill, black pill. I don't even understand these pills. But if you're supporting patriarchy, you're supporting the way that where God mm -hmm. designed us. Right. 75 to 80% of black community or whatever they call it. I try not to say the C word. There are five times as many people with uh, there's five times as many platforms preaching and promoting the other stuff. Gotcha. And yes. They they will push you all the way over to you or manosphere. But um, what was I, I was going to say? Oh, but wait a minute. I got to ask the question because um, Mr. Steele didn't say this. I thought black man from what your definition of the manosphere, manosphere was, it was just basically promoting men. And you all could take like the barbershop. You all could take your issues there and empowering you all to be better men. I didn't there's, think it had anything to do with finding wives. They're still going to push you in the manosphere. Yeah, yeah. They, they want if you to be married. Mm -hmm. If you're not pandering and telling women we want to hear, you're you're defaulted, pushed into the manosphere. If you say anything about, say, lose weight or what men want or families together, marry before you can manosphere. Anything other than run out of here, out of control, manosphere. Okay. But welcome. We're glad you're here. No, I'm a independent, <laughs> I am an independent thinker and I push marriage and I, uh, that's what I do. And I'm not a part of any particular group. I don't even know what y'all talking about, but again, I do advocate for men. So I get what you're saying, but right. nobody has ever said anything to me about this though. This is this is the first time I ever heard that or even asked me, am I a part of the manosphere? Um, I didn't sign up for anything. But if they're speaking the same thing that I'm speaking, then I agree with them. But I didn't know they were speaking marriage, though, or fine. You know, they're not now, speaking marriage over there. They're, they're not. No. Nah. Oh, OK, but I got one, one last question. I don't want to be greedy and hog, hogging the mic. <laughs> Go ahead, Panderson. Um, and women I've been talking to lately, some friends, some potential, some whatever. I asked some of these, some of this question. Every one of them gets it, but never heard it before. Do you know that women don't know that the options that they don't have? If you understand what I'm saying. So they act like they have options, but they really, but they're living in a delusional society, thinking that they have them when they really don't. Right. Do no. I translate that correctly? They don't know the men. They don't know the men who don't talk to them. 
they don't know the men who qualify and whatever, or everything they want, they walk past them and won't talk to them. They're not aware that that happens. They're not oh. aware of the options that they don't have. So you're saying so your view of men is only the ones that they interact with. They don't know that there's a whole bunch of men that won't even talk to them and that they even exist. Okay. So, right? well, I mean, so that how, how, wait a minute now. So if I'm at the mall and I'm a single woman and mm -hmm. there's um, 10 men that walk by me, um, I wouldn't think anything of that, but you were saying that those 10 men didn't want you. What I'm saying is there are some women who they walk in the mall or right. go to a club or somewhere, somewhere where people are approaching. They get approached right. by three dudes. Okay. One is Pookie, one is Simp Jenkins, one is Dusty Panderson. Okay. And one is Joe Average. Their view of men and is just those four men. That's what they really think is out there. They don't know that uh, Success Jones was over there, Abs Jenkins that just came out the gym, uh, Bobby business suit. They don't know that these men exist. They don't right. know that these men don't want to talk to me. They're not interested. I don't qualify for these men. A lot of women tell me they don't know that. Oh, they well, know. Was, Go ahead. Go ahead, black man. There was a, there was an entire, I don't know if you've seen it, Dr. Patterson. There was an entire show dedicated to what you're talking about. And it was on before she retired. It was on Ayamba. And she had the black women come in, these black men that are making big money, mm -hmm. right? She brought them all in. And one of them was a musician. One of them was an architect. One of them was a, a lawyer or whatever. And they brought them all in. They brought all different types of women in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, all types. And they had the men sit down in front of the women. I don't know if y'all saw this. And the women were saying, he said, I'm tired of women saying that I'm, I'm feminine because I like to go dancing. He said, why do why do you guys as black women say that to me? That I'm that I'm homosexual because I go out salsa dancing. Why do women say that I'm I'm homosexual when I walk on the beach or I want to play my instrument out on the beach? They said that's soft. Like these men were expressing themselves to these women and the whole time, oh please go watch it. The whole time they were in it like this. Well, you know, Sam, that's 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 funny that you would say that because just the other night when we was watching on one of these platforms, a young lady told Mandrill that he was weird. And yep. I thought that was funny. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. That was, I was like, Mandrill's probably what you would consider a catch. He's kind of weird to me. I'm thinking, but we don't really yeah. know him. Why? You know, we're in the, we're in the market. So this is what we see and been dealing. But weird, but listen, I always, thought, I always thought weird and peculiar. I thought weird and peculiar was a good thing. <laughs> That's what it, I it, yeah, it reversed itself now. When you hear weird, that's a negative. That's a negative. Actually, um, no, there's, there's different types of weird. That's the whole thing. Oh, different it's types weird of weird. Comes, yes, when it comes to weird, like setting trends, like okay, I see what you're saying. Like, 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 mm -hmm. Celebrity lifestyle, like you know everything, but yet he's still attracting women, stuff like that. That they praise that and stuff. But as weird as in, like you know, okay. He might be a science geek nerd or something like that, like you know, into anime and stuff, or um, he's into you know biology, science, talking everything. They consider that weird as not a good thing for some females and stuff, but you know, for majority of them, one. the ones I that the most men are trying to attract, those women find that weird in some logical way. But wow. okay, okay, so yeah, Anderson, is that what you there acting that way? Then it's an excuse because unfortunately. He has money. I see. I see what you, Panderson. Is that what you're talking about? Like that? Because um, I, I always thought particular, uh, peculiar, and we simple man, peculiar man, and a um, weird guy. I always thought was kind of what you what you like. <laughs> so I don't know. No, I don't know. more of all it's of those women really probably fun. thought they qualified for those men. I don't like the don't cool know. guy. The cool guy is a joke. You know, I kind of always I laugh at the cool the cool guy is kind of funny, don't y'all? I mean, maybe just just me. All right, don't well, worry about it. Being redefined from a woman's point of view, and I know most men want to adapt to get the attraction from a woman's point of view. They promote they promote some of this online, Twitter, and everything. But how they like the weird things, the weird guys is just a trendsetter. But they pay, look at the type of woman who's actually saying this stuff. These are the type of woman that most men want to get with, but unfortunately, 
she has a vision of a type of guy that she's attracted to. Right. The outgoing stuff, she'll find that, that weirdness attractive. But the average, if you have your own stereotype of a weird guy, something like that, from your point of view, boss, that's not the guy that she's going to find attractive like that. She's no, yeah. That is well, I'm being agree- in a funny world now. Like, you know. I'm agreeing, Panderson, I'm agreeing with you on that one. I'm saying You're the right. woman, the women don't know. Like uh, black men said, these women, all these men were successful. Mm-hmm. Yep. The women probably don't know that ninety percent of them don't even qualify, and they're and they're texting, look at their phones, about to call somebody else. They probably think they qualify for these men, and they don't. Mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. Hmm. But listen, I would agree with you all mind. that that women need some work, and we want to make sure that they get exactly uh, what do you call it. I, I would say they're a little um, what's the word. I'm not sure of the word I'm looking for, but we need to add some balance to them. You know, just a little bit, little, little balance, a little yeah, humility. humility. Yeah, I'm, yeah. You know? we got to refrain from, we got to refrain from our, our, our black sisters out here. We got to refrain from uh, trying to get the work and, and start trying to do the work. Well, no, listen, I'm not interested in, in killing them. You know, oh. I, I think they need love too. Yeah, I said yeah. that word again. I didn't mean it that way. Y'all understand what I mean, right? No, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I, no, I, we know what you meant. A lot of times people don't know. They just don't know. And then we're living in a, in a, in a time where everything is so uh, virtual and, and Instagram and all of that. And it's just really not real. And then when you get to something that's real, you don't know how to recognize what is good for you. So I'm saying we need to love on our women. And you, you guys, uh, sometimes men have to explain to women what is good. They gotta be and, that's, and that's you see that's what I want to happen. I want you all to sometimes explain to these women what is good instead of you know beating them over the head in their ignorance. Don't beat them down with the ignorance, you know. Explain okay. to them what is well, good. Let me ask you a question, those uh, security boss. Let me ask yeah. a question to the men on the panel. Okay. Me male, to, male. to the men. To the oh, okay. men. Oh, so, so, so male, male, yeah. are you married? No. Okay, Dr. Parents is not married, Jay's not married, right? Let me ask y'all a question. Correct. If if security boss somehow um had her her mom had triplets and they were all raised the same way, and somehow somehow all of them ended up with the same mindset, they think alike, they take care of their men the same, and they all three of those other women were single. How many of you on the panel would be married? Me. I mean, see my see, see what I'm talking know. about? See how powerful that is? So it's not like the men don't want black women or they don't want women, period, and they hate no women and women this and women that. Mm-mm, that's not it. It's a particular woman that they want. And I just and this this these are three men that want the same type of woman. But wait a minute. Oh, oh, but listen. We're willing to compete with each other to get that 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 woman too. Right. I yeah, agree. That is true. Listen, I agree with the group that comes here, but I hear a lot of hate. I hear hate now. Come on. Yeah, you, hate. you do. You what do. Type of hate I hear some hate. Not, not you guys, but I'm being no, honest. I don't know what you mean. I done heard some of them say, uh, uh, go home and tell, you, tell your wife to shut the H up. And I'm thinking, oh. And they were claiming to be a part of the manosphere too, guys. Go home and tell your woman, mm-hmm. wife, she need to t- shut the hell. I'm like, what? That's not That's not something. You don't want to put that out there for, my, for a young man to be growing up in because that is just that's not good. I didn't it wouldn't go. Well yeah, I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree, I don't with, agree with that. Yeah, I don't agree with bullying your wife. Yeah, I don't, but, I don't okay, agree with but that. going back to what you all were saying, we have a lot of ignorance um as as women. And we do need to learn exactly those things that you just said. Uh and and but I just don't want you all to beat us up in our ignorance because women do we do miss it. Some do miss it. But there are some oh, women who <clears throat> I, yeah. I did it. Yeah, we some, don't talk like this but, in the field. But, this is just on the panel. Yeah, some soft some skills come out in the field. You want to try to give them a benefit of doubt. And stuff. Yeah, so they're very passionate. They know what they're saying. They understand what they're saying. I'm trying to force it. We got a thing now that's called <clears throat> now. And so listen, you, know you listen. But let me let me say this for you. Don't hold that thought. A young lady, I think it was Miss Creative, just said. So it's like um Steve Urkel and the woman won't step on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He was Urkel, but then once he, I'm just going to add to it. He was Urkel, but once he got married, he became Stefan. But, but watch this. But what she did, but what she, but she wanted, she wanted Stefan's looks 
but she wanted Urkel's charm. See, see, so we got, so we got, we got to break this TV show down. Mm-hmm. But they both because the the Urkel really didn't have no charm, Stefan. Right. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, Stefan. Look at Stefan. All the women wanted him. Wanted him. <laughs> all the women wanted him. Gave him all that attention. She didn't. Laura didn't like that. Listen, say it right. You know, <laughs> Urkel was the simp. You know, put it this way. Laura, you know, <laughs> Stephon, you, oh you know, you know, you know, you know, you you know, 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 Urkel wore her down. Did she? Did he not? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, oh. This is the sad yeah. part. Uh, he, uh, he had a girl, Myra. Yep, Myra, Myra was his Myra. He he Laura. Want, listen, he didn't want Myra. He wanted Laura. He wanted Laura, and that's another big main problem right there. Yep, like, want yo, something that ain't Myra good for liked you. It. Myra liked it. Steve Urkel for choice. himself. Yeah, Laura yeah, didn't yeah, like Steve Urkel like Myra that until. Later on, till she was technically ran through in the way, if you put it that way. Wait a minute. <laughs> if you want to put the map on yes. I mean, I'm going to put it If you think about it, Laura, wait a Laura minute. Like ran through, and then she got with Stefan, but Stefan tried to find his purpose. But wait Laura. a minute. So he couldn't make time for Laura. So Teddy Laura was alone. But wait Laura a minute. Wait a minute. Time. I can't imagine Laura being ran through. Just slow down. You're taking me too fast. Hold on. Hold on. Well, oh, yes, she was. Mm-hmm. Listen, hold on. I gotta, gotta get my head straight. He just, he just said that Laura was ran through. Come on, y'all. Yep, yep. Laura was for the streets. Yep. Stop. Every, every episode, listen, listen. Every episode, Laura was with a different dude. Yeah, but come on, y'all. Y'all gonna put Laura in the? You trying to say Laura was a three hundred four? Laura was right. in, in another sense, yes. <laughs> I cannot believe y'all have been from Laura to like later on during the the season, like the last two seasons of the episode. Breaks up with Myra, who worshiped the dude, liked him for him, for Laura, because Laura, because when when Steve cloned himself and the clone made himself to Stefan fully, Stefan started to find purpose in himself. He got into career, Marlon, and he started, he had to travel. This is amazing. That's me finding purpose. Unfortunately, we couldn't make time for Laura no more because he was traveling. And so then Laura, she wanted him. Laura was technically lost again, back and forth. So she was, she was alone. Also, this she, is amazing. You know, they had a, they had a, a contest, like, um, um, an auction contest, an auction of a man. Steve joined that auction, and then so she gave him a kiss, and all of a sudden she fell for him. That's a settlement. This is crazy, y'all. You see this email. Yeah, Bill, you need to, I need you to stop watching TV. I need you to stop watching TV. You watch too much TV. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, I, I want to break it down for another point of view now. No, you did. I'm just kidding. You did. You do it. You, you do absolutely excellent with these TV shows, but Miss Creative, you did this. Somebody <laughs> said, rest it. Miss Vaughn said, rest your case, yeah. Myra. <laughs> yeah, right. Security. Yeah, Michelle Thomas, she passed away in real life. That's why he's writing that. Yeah. Did she oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's really 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 yeah. How old was she? Like twenty something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like in no. late late twenties. She had she had stomach cancer. Yep. Yeah. Many you years. Know, her dad wow. was her cooling. Her dad. Yeah. Her and Mac- her and Malcolm and Jamal Warner were about to get married. I think. Oh, listen, oh, friends, yeah. give me the Cosby Show. Was boss the girl that played Justine? Theo's no, you. Yeah. Uh huh. Same girl, right? Same Same Listen, uh, let me read this comment. It says, um, Friendsgiving says, Laura was not for the streets. I agree with you. She raised two children in a traditional home. Steve was annoying. But man. guess what? That's kind of like, don't you man. want that, though? You want that, Sam. Don't you want that? How many times Laura snuck back <laughs> in the house and got caught? Just man. because a woman was raised in a two-parent household doesn't mean she can be a three or four on the low. I know certain amount of females. I knew you was going to say that. Mother and a father. And, and the worst, and, and the, the worst of her did, did, did it quietly. The, the worst of like the I can't church believe daddy, the, dad, the church, the, the, the pastor's daughter. The pastor's daughters, woo, them the worst ones. Good oh, God Almighty. Uh, you know what? I can't believe y'all doing this. Oh God. God. Y'all, done, y'all done went through season number one and done. How many seasons was it with her? How many times, time, time Laura, nine? How many times Laura walked yeah. in and walked in the house late and snuck in when her mom and dad went to Stop, stop, stop. No, y'all, that's terrible. I cannot, I, believe, I cannot believe y'all have just compared life to, <laughs> to Urkel and Stephon. This, this, is what, this is what the red pill does. The reality of what it is. They fantasize mm-hmm. on TV so much, but we put a reality red pill perspective on it. Just like Don't we were doing. We. You're on your own. 
What yeah, happened I mean, afterwards when the prince got with the princess? They don't talk about that. It's TV, man. Just like <laughs> the Will and Jada thing. Man, I don't know or care what they got. Kanye. It's TV. And it's, oh, yeah, and it's Kanye, the love. Oh, man, that's a disaster. Mm. Yeah, I don't know and I don't care what the it's TV, man. It's fake. Ooh, so male, you came in like a light, but did, what did you want to add to this conversation? You know, <laughs> you know beyond the one through nine seasons of, of Urkel. Family what matters. what family matters? Yeah, what 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 with the world like? with, with, with Dwayne Wade and Denise and Whitley? First season, Wayne was yeah. simping for Denise hard. You said, Whoa, Dr. Pants, what you say? Dwayne yeah, Wade built himself up and got his yeah, work. exactly. Yeah, first, that's right. Yeah, himself. and but the yeah, first hold, hold, thing he was, you say he, he said he built himself up and got what? Got, got, with him, got him a woman. Yeah. You so you stop it, Panda. So you, you, you're joking right now. It's no, TV, no, man. I'm gonna break it down. Let me break it down. Dwayne Wade, the first season of, of Different World. He was simping hard for Denise like crazy. She left the show, but at the second season began, he start. That's when he started his manhood. There was a season where I think it was the third season when wait a minute, saw Dwayne hold dressed hold up. Hold in a nice let me ask you, Mel, Mel, let me ask you a serious question. <laughs> this is a serious question. Are you really saying that the red pills really do what you're? They do what you're saying right now. That's let really me, what. Let they me do. tell you what the red pill is. Let me, let me, let me use that metaphor. Okay. It, did I hear you say why we? Most of us, we... Rate, most of us yeah, rate said we... fantasy, fantasy lifestyle or what we were taught instead of accepting things what they are. That's telling you what the red pill, blue pill, you know, compared with the Matrix, how people was in the Matrix are taking blue pill. It's a fantasy world. Red pill's reality. We're supposed to accept things for what it is and then plan from there. The re, the, re, the blue pill that we was raised as women or good girls, sugar and spice, we're supposed to be romantic and they take us. No, red pill reality, there's certain behaviors in their own nature that tiny women are attracted to, and that's when we have to set. So wait a minute. So how does this how does this help you? Are you saying this is very congruent or uh, it works in real life, or you know, because they always, you know, TV shows are very scripted and they tell you exactly or you see exactly how it's gonna fall out typically. There's no there's no human nature in it. Somebody's telling somebody what to do. So boss, how do you apply this to your real life? They don't get it. No, uh, it's, 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 here's the thing. I, I know it's kind of confused, construed it because what happened throughout the years when the manosphere, there's too many, what happened is men, men created a space and it was technically on, on YouTube for us to speak our truth, but also too, along the way, just like any organization that get created, there's a lot of extremists in there. So we got different philosophies of views clashing down. We got this side that's for marriage, for relationship. This side's like pump and dump. This side's like screw everything. We giving up, you know, go our own way. It, it, and, and this is like, it's like a war of up amongst each other and stuff. I'm like, yeah, when yeah. I got on this space, it's like, you know what? I had my thing with women and everything. But when I learned from certain behaviors, I learned from, from Alan Roger Curry, from a woman's sexual nature and stuff. And that's what helped me along the way. I learned I learned start from Corey Wayne, then I start from Alan Roger Curry, which I look up to a whole lot. And you know, and I started accepting women's nature how it is and stuff. Okay. Some okay. behaviors women do is in their nature. I never yeah. I know some dudes, there's a stages of beings in the red pill. There's um the, the the stage when you become red pill weird, then you get into the red pill rage. Okay, and okay. That's what happened with a lot of dudes. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a that's a lot because you know yeah, what I know it's a lot though, but I yeah. want you just to live your life. So hold on for a minute. Jay, do you have anything else to add to your this conversation? Because guess what, guys? We are over uh two hours and it is time to uh almost say our goodbyes. So no, I got you. Wow, go ahead, Mr. Okay. Jay. Came on earlier. Jay, because it's, it's kind of bring funny. us back, but, Jay. Um, bring us back to real life. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. It's I on you. Me. Thank you. No, but like I wanted to get back to when uh when you said nobody knows how to speak to anybody anymore, that has never been my reality. Although I don't like talking on the phone to people, I don't like texting, and I sure as heck don't like writing letters. I like speaking to people face to face. That's always been my strongest suit. Okay. And I'm not going to give it up just because we're in a new era. Because people are so lazy that they don't want to talk to anybody. And yes, that is a stab at those people, but you need to get out. You need to speak to some people and really get out. Now, if you have social anxiety, that can always be worked on. There's help for that. Me, I didn't really have that issue. It was just more stage fright. 
Once okay. I started speaking to people as I got older, I got better and better at it. Now I do like talking to people face to face. But <clears throat> people got to get out of that social media crap and actually spend a day away from your freaking elect- electronics. I know you're never going to do it because you've got too much pride and you've been too indoctrinated in it to put it down. See this? You need to throw this and get it and get rid of it. What did you just throw? Is that your phone? My phone. Oh Let's my. protect it. Don't worry. That's an example. Yeah. Who, okay. who you need to take your phone, you need to throw it, and you need to be away from it for a good whole day. Who are you referring to? You really need to? to do that. So you can actually just be able to clear your mind out from some of this clog that you got in it. Because it's like a drain. So, you know, when you're talking to other people and you and you're actually on a date with somebody, I tell people all the time, because I throw my phone away all the time. I like to get to know, I'm trying to get to know the person. I don't care what's going on in my phone. You, to the lady out there, you should throw your phone away too whenever you're trying to see a guy because he's interested in you. He don't give a freak what's in your phone. He don't care about that. At least the cats that I hang around, we don't care about that. All we care about, we're trying to get to know the mind of the lady that we are in front of right now. That's my whole thing for being here right now, to get to know what your your likes, your dislikes, your hobbies, the peculiar the peculiarities that you have, and and I don't know what y'all ladies talking about. We still use peculiarity, you know, peculiar for you, but we find that in a very attractive way. We do see it. So, so you know, whenever you're doing, um, you know, just trying to like be on dates, to being about in public, just you know, walking about stuff. Get off the phone, really. Sometimes mm. I understand some people can be annoying. Sometimes I get that because I used to be in the same mindset like that. Like, screw everybody. I don't want to hear nobody except me. It's kind of you sound very egocentric when you sound like that. And you hear the sound of, if you like the sound of your own voice a little too much, then that just kind of colors you at that point. So what you were saying about, you know, just, you know, getting away from like the social media stuff. I agree with you, ma'am. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like I said, I've never been the type of person to be on it like that. And um, like I said, I talk to people, even the people in the country are nicer than some of the people in the city. To be honest, I've spoken to them and I'm like, they like conversating with me. So and the thing is, they have very they have technology, but they have very minimal in it because they actually know hard work. And um, it is a hot take, security boss. But I will say this: y'all city folks ain't got nothing on the country folks. I'm just gonna be real. You just dropped the mic. <laughs> did you just drop the mic? I tell you. <laughs> so listen, Panderson, did you have anything else you want to say? Because I'm going to end the show, but I got yeah, something I want to tell it. you all before I go. Go I'll ahead. Make it quick. Um, red pill rate, red pill, and red pill rage has a dark hole. I didn't know who you were applying it to when you were talking, Jay. The dark hole of red pill rage is this. There's men, yeah, I'll make six figures and I, I have a job and I have abs. <laughs> no, that's not the answer. A woman is still a woman and soft skills are required. Talk to her and be respectful. Have a conversation. You still need to be appealing. But I, honestly, there are people out here. They're mad at the world and they're going all the way to the MGTOW. MGTOW is an absolute disaster. These people haven't smiled in 13 years. Mm. They're miserable. The solution to these angry, super masculine, raw, hate women, they need a soft woman. Ooh. But they can't get it because they don't have those soft skills to. to... I'll leave it at that. I'm done. Anderson, are you up there yeah. whispering into your mic? Yeah, just I mean, you, you, know, you getting it, man. You know, it's tough to the lace. I'm gonna get you a woman. I'm gonna get you a woman. How, how, how you doing today? Is everything there you okay? Go. There you go. Oh, really? Show oh, us the soft skills. Sit down. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I, I hear you. Okay. Hey, you. You know what? You're gonna be married by the end of next year. I, I'm, I'm telling you. Then I click the mute button. Listen, y'all funny. That's so listen, listen. Um, Bethany, she says at Security Boss, are you going to be in Houston April 23rd? Yes. Uh, I have not decided yes. Uh, yet I'm in and out. I'm in and out. One moment, yes, one moment, no. So I, I'll, I'll see. I'm going to surprise y'all. Yes. But I want to surprise y'all. What, mail? Before we go, yeah. mail. My final words? Yes, sir. I got something I want to share with y'all real quick. Uh, you want to share it first or you want me to go? No, ahead? no, no, no. I want you to go ahead and tell us what you got. Um. All right, first of all, I have to disagree with Panda when he twisted the red pill, red pill rage. Those are still two different things. Because red pill, being red pill is not being your phone. You just accept things for what it is. I was talking about the, the rage. Re- yeah, the reality of it. Okay, I'm out on a date with a girl. And she's on her phone, talking on the phone while I'm even trying to talk to her. 
Let's say she go out on the next date with another guy and she doesn't do that with that guy. The reality of that is, I just wasn't that guy she was she found highly attractive for her to stop that. And I have to accept that. That's what red pill is. Either oh, I did something wrong right. or or she just didn't find me attractive no matter what I did right. I just have to accept that and move on. That's me being red pill. Like the reality is I have to accept things don't work in my favor. It could be me or the other person, but I can't hold a grudge to them about it. I have to move on to find better outcomes for myself and everything and just accept things what it is. Red pill rage is just accepting things, but going with a hateful attitude about it. Oh, um, 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 she didn't like me because she's, she's this, that, and everything. Do her name and everything. Blah, blah, blah. No, like, that's what Red Pill Rage is. Like, yo, you're setting things for reality, but now you find a, find, find a dispute about that. So, you know, that the yeah, reality I, is like, you know, you have to... I mentioned, Real Pill, I mentioned Red Pill Rage. Yeah, you missed Not just Red Pill. Together. It's not the same. No, All right, guys, we're not gonna, we're gonna, go, to, we're not gonna go back and forth about the pills because um I don't understand anyway, and I guess it's not for me to understand, but I want to share I'm something with you that, all. Man. So listen, I'm glad that you all are here. Please yeah. definitely continue to come to come back. Chat, I love you, but I gotta tell y'all something really quick. I've been talking for weeks about a new dating show. The dating show is here. This week we are advertising, hopefully, about the dating show. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're going to put the buzz out there because I want all you bachelors to come to unsolicited and get the update so you can know how to put your name in the hat. On Friday, I will share with you all who the bachelorette is. This is going to be going on during the month of April. All right. So I want all you eligible bachelors to participate. And we're going to continue to talk about this more and more and more. But. During the month of April, we the dating show is called I Choose You. All right. So it's coming. It's a real thing. The you're gonna have all these updates, but advertisement for the dating show should start this week. I'll let you know exactly what day. Well, you know what? You're gonna just look for the advertisement. It'll be out there. It's gonna be Google, it's gonna be everywhere, it's gonna be on Black Man, it's gonna be on I can't tell you who else, but anyway, it's gonna be there. So I want y'all to look for it. And then I'm going to let you know who the eligible bachelorette is on friday but i want all y'all in there because once this is done the month of april the bachelor will be the next month so stay tuned for that tell your friends eligible men that want to be married and that are looking for love i don't want no jokes now i don't want no playing around because i'm gonna get you somebody that fits all those categories and y'all somebody told said it today the best i want to be in competition you will have your competition <laughs> And I'll tell y'all more about how it's going to go. But the whole everyone, the whole audience, we all will be judging. We all will pick one each week for the finale. On the finale, we'll have three men and one woman. And she'll get to choose the one that she wants to go out with if she decides she wants to go out with them. So competition, it will be. But each week, we'll choose one. And we're looking for about 20 men. I mean, all of you all can compete, of course, but we're going to try to pull down about 20. It may not be 20, maybe more, but we're looking for 20 good el eligible bachelors for I Choose You, and it started in April, but more details will come by the end of this week. So listen, move your shoulders because I got a super chat. Friends Givens, thank you so much for your $20 super chat. She says, great show, SB. Hope to see the single fellas on your dating show. Me too. Hey, you know what? And on Tuesday, yeah, guys, yeah. on tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be a fool, guys, um, on Black Men Unfiltered Network. So, oh, guys, I'm three away from 700, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, but, yeah, tomorrow, please come on over. We we, we talking. Woo. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about men and women that sit back in the shadows and, and wait on you and your men to have problems so they can slip on in there. Mmm. Oh, that sounds like some girl single girlfriend stuff. Oh, I love to be on that topic tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it's called uh, Dirty Mackers. So. <laughs> hey, yep, hey, you know what? That's the name Mackin. of the church. That's the name of the show. Dirty Mackin. Dirty Mackin. Oh, no. That's too much. All right, guys. Listen. Y'all have been perfect. Black man, stay tuned.
Have a good evening, y'all. Listen, I'll be back on Wednesday, and we're going to be doing some advertising. We're going to tell you a little bit more, but get excited about it. Talk to all the single bachelors you know. Or if you're smart, don't tell nobody. Keep it for yourself. Good night. I'm out the country till the 31st. I'll be back. You you good? Not until April. You won't. Guess what? You, you Panda, so you might not know who she is until you come back. I don't know. I can't tell no secrets. All right, guys. Y'all have a good evening. We'll see you soon. Black man, hang back for just a little bit. And we'll see you, Mel. See you soon. Bye bye. Don't want to finish. And I'm sorry if that sounds a bit. But I am to the core. You want the whole damn thing. Then you ask him for more. You want that old jive swing. You take up all of the floor. I'm fine with standing at the edge of the door. You be the life of the party. You drink it all to Bacardi. Let's take it back for this started. You want the love? I don't got it. You scream and stay, baby, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different with distance, we roam into zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. Instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Laying house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Laying house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts they too are scared to usher you off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably want to beat my step and take up to my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars We the poets at sunset It's funny how love can pull out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist this bliff and laugh and relax and be crying And I'm trying to find the reason so I ask Does forever ever happen or is it always fade to black? I can't say No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.